if I recall correctly, you all had finished a wonderful exploration of a workshop of some kind on the far eastern side of this strange clocked in sort of keep and you had discovered multiple levers and a large cauldron of some kind some sort of a strange magical circle and then you decided to play around with the levers which caused the cauldron to or the crucible even to crash down and shatter but unfortunately it also activated the magical circle and it just kind of went all crazy it started melting some sort of a strange metal and coming out but you all insisting that you wanted to do what you could to protect something you worked quite hard to be able to drag this big chunk of metal that was slowly being molten like a well basically like butter in a frying pan dragging it out of the metal circle leaving a pool of molten metal beneath it a large chunk extremely shiny from where it had melted with little pieces of the crucible all over the place and only a couple of burns on certain individuals <laughs> um, but that's pretty much where it was if i recall correctly Anyone? yeah pretty sure yeah I don't, I don't think we went too much further than that yeah 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 that was pretty much it yeah uh, you had explored further in the area down here you got a pretty good idea of kind of what's going on for a lot of stuff mm -hmm. let's see i'll give you a fresh bit by bit um, a fresh compilation of what you are aware of including what you can kind of surmise from where you haven't necessarily been yet and in fact you've seen so much of it I can now just incorporate the order super easily so going to maps ah crap it's already there no same thing same thing that's what's there I'm not gonna post it again <laughs> fair enough fair enough yeah so what do you want to do uh, uh well I'd say the room to the north literally just loops back around like it does at the south of where we are at the moment yeah it's pretty good educated guess there um I think really the only way to go would be either through the portcullis or the door to the east of that room. Mayhaps. And what is the condition of the light on the room at the moment? Is it possible or is it basically the floor is lava quite in the <laughs> Currently, within the well, the area of the magical circle, though you couldn't cannot see it any longer. In that area, with the remains of the cauldron, it is clearly still a bubbling soup of molten metal. Outside of that, much of the metal has cooled quite quickly. And you could, theoretically, like I wouldn't want to do it barefoot, but you could theoretically just walk around most of the puddles and perhaps even walk over some of this metal without too much harm. And as long as you don't go directly through the middle, you should be fine. You got plenty of room to either side. And of course you do have this big glob of metal that's quickly cooling and you hear it popping and as it uh, cools down and builds all kinds of different strange structures within it. And of course you do have also the big leather cloak aprons that you could use to help protect you if you need it. But yeah, you could easily walk to the other side. Um... If I remember correctly, the square, like the intersection at the northeast corner of like the giant square on the map, like that northeast corner was where the spike fall trap was. So it's, I would presume, Correct. impassable that way. Mm, not necessarily. You could just get past the trap. Yeah. Wait, I mean, did, it, it did it not take up the entire square there? Or? It does. Yeah, it's basically like 10 feet by 10 feet. Hmm. 
I'm sure I have a gang of faster then. Can we well. just go north? Where were we at? On the side. I mean, north is where that trap was. I mean, technically, yeah, but... you, could, you could hug the left corner or one of the corners and just, you know, just take a step around the corner, possibly. Yeah, well, technically, yeah. And also, um, we might I as guess. well just go through the northern door of this room and confirm that it does um, not have a path. No, I'm fine. Uh, I'm going off. Yep, that's, yep, that's going off. Uh, we'll prepare the lever uh, to help make sure we don't exactly get burned by the <laughs> pops. Cast the spell. I just walk around the edges of the. Yeah, I'll, room. I'll just walk around it carefully. I mean, I've, um, I can't remember. Don't run. Around if you might trip. Cloak someone up. Yeah, you don't I, want to trip. I can cast <laughs> absorb fair. elements. Would that help? Only if we are dumb. Okay. <laughs> we should be fine just going around. Taking See, our look time. at that. Fieria wasn't even here for Papa Pietro's. She already knows not to run because you can slip. <laughs> <laughs> Did any oh, of no. us run and slip though? In no. Papa Pietro's? No, it was definitely inside yeah. this dungeon, Piero. Uh, ran Piero and also ran in slip and fell in the portocollis room, but yeah, you know they weren't there for that either. But Papa Pietro's is also a good example because there were multiple fallings within an ice cream, molten ice cream. So yeah, true. Yeah, uh, so many questions. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so many answers the way, you don't want. Trust me. I yeah. remember the spell. It's the simulacrum spell. Ah, yeah. You require snow or ice in quantity sufficient to make a life-size copy of a duplicated, duplicated creature. You literally make a living snowman. Cool. Oh. With all the, the weaknesses. I was going to more ask, like, can the snowman typically stab somebody? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, go full T2. And they'll just <laughs> form this ice blade. Yeah. Here, ice we go, blade. here we go. Go, go make uh, Olaf the serial killer. <laughs> so skirting around the giant pool of metal uh, that again has mostly cooled getting to this another large door it seems like this is a push door if the uh, if everything known about the doorknobs is continuous and correct within this dungeon <sighs> he should have to excuse me every time he should have to push this door open and uh, by what convention would you like to do this? You've got some long pokey thing with hooks on them now. Those could maybe help so that you don't have to get up on shoulders. You could do those. You could potentially open the door just with those. Sure. Can you actually... Oh, yeah, you I, I definitely couldn't. Go. I probably can't hold one of those on my own, but... He would not be able to, no. But you <laughs> I could can try. Put the hook through the ring and then just push the hook to one side or the other to rotate the ring uh, yeah. and then push or pull to open the door so an individual could do it theoretically uh you know what i i'll, I'll get uh piero to give it a try with one of the pokers see if we can try to leverage and instead of getting finny on somebody's back okay it there's a combination of different effects here. One, you've got to kind of carefully move this poker to be able to kind of hook it in correctly. And then, of course, there's the strength aspect because you're kind of losing all of the leverage being this far away from when you're trying to move um, because it's like eight feet up in the air. So maybe a dexterity check or a strength check, some combination of the both to try and see what uh, you can accomplish here. Oh, I could roll, I could borrow, uh, roll one... One strength and one dexterity, and which one ever the lowest? I wouldn't go that far. Well, uh, but you could if you want. Well, but I mean, I'm just saying you could do one or the other, or you could roll both and take the lowest if you want, because yeah. I think that would be funnier. But that's up to you. <laughs> Let's roll it. <laughs> All right, roll them both and see what's worse. Oh, sweet. Uh, okay. So my best one was a six. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and my which one, one is a one. <laughs> Hey. Which one? Which one was the one? Dexterity. Okay. Oh boy, we're so, so strong in this session. You get this. You get this 
uh, hook set up there, and you're like, all right, yeah, we don't need you to do this thing. We got this. We, I got this. I got this. <laughs> and you bring the hook up, and it goes thunk, and the blade of it just goes right sticking into the wood about a foot and a half <laughs> to the left of the ring. And you're like, okay, hang on, hang on. And you try to pull it out a little bit, and it's a little bit stuck, and you have to pull it a little bit further, and it's just boom, as this long metal rod finally pulls free. And, yeah, you're just kind of <laughs> trying to get it on there. And it takes a couple of really slow movements to be able to get the hook in. Uh, and then as you try to kind of move it off to the side and pull it one way or the other, yeah, you just don't – it's just, it's just not turning. You don't know if it's just an issue of leverage or just a failure in many regards. Phineas yeah, this guy looks so disappointed up at Pierre. It's like, yeah, like this is. <sighs> well, I showed that door. This is the person I trust my life with. <laughs> yeah, like you, you do this a bit, and you're just like, well, I guess it's not gonna open then. <clears throat> <laughs> so, back to the original plan then. I uh, will get. Oh, do you want to give it another go? Or... Vosvik uh, is like, standing there, insistent that you just get up on his shoulders, because this I'm, is taking just, way too long. I'm just gonna get up on Vosvik's shoulders. Alright, you get up on Vosvik's shoulders, and you uh, operate the handle. It, it actually feels a bit kind of stuck. Uh, you haven't seen any locked doors, so you don't know if this is locked, but it, it feels stuck. Could you make a... do you want to make a strength check to try and force it? Uh, is there anything I could, like, check to see if the door has, like, a lock on it, or if, if I could yeah. figure out if it is locked at all? Yeah, you could roll an investigation. Investigation is... that is a nat 20, hell yeah. 22 total. Very nice. Uh, see, uh, with... see, Pierre, that's how it's done, okay? That's how it's with... done. <laughs> with careful observation, really up close being very detailed and thorough, uh, you have determined that this door appears to be virtually identical to all the others and appears to have nothing of interest. So no locks or anything down. <laughs> oh, nothing there we go. Apparent. Not 20 side, wasted for the day, boys. <laughs> <laughs> on this side, it looks exactly like every other door. Um, I guess I'll yeah, just try and force it, I suppose. I cast okay. a magic spell on it. To, 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 to any magic? What type of... Well, you actually already have detect magic. I already you got had, it. You yeah, had it. detect magic up when you came in. Yeah, the only right. thing that was magical was the ring that yeah, is uh, within the center of the room. The door mm -hmm. did not appear to be magical in any way. Alright, so no need to. Alright, cool. Yeah, uh, well, yeah I'll, I'll just try and um, I guess force it open. I suppose. Might just be okay. stuck like some of the other handles have been, so. Now, I'll let you know, too. Oh. Mm. It may or may not apply in this case. You may not have it. Do you have thieves' tools? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. There's another option that you, that is open, potentially, when you have thieves' tools or plastic oil, things like that. Instead of making strength checks, there's potential for you to be able to fiddle with the mechanism, so to speak, and make thieves' tools checks or uh, something along those lines. Those are possibilities. So depending on what it is and the cause. Basically, I don't want you to think that every door that doesn't open mm. insists on strength. Well, no, I, I just gathered, like, if it didn't clearly have a lock, or if it was literally just, like, a ring on the door, I presume, like, lockpicks or thieves' tools wouldn't really do anything with it. Take the hinges which is, off. <laughs> which is correct in this case. Well, well, amazingly, a... these doors use mostly hidden hinges. <laughs> it would be so, kind of... It would become a very intrinsical, uh, intrinsical <laughs> hinge. <laughs> yeah, you get one hinge off, and then it just starts to rip free and crushes you. Oh, <laughs> um, sounds like a plan. <laughs> all right, so go ahead and make a strength check. Right. Finally, an end. Uh, that is a seventeen. Good roll. Okay, with a seventeen and a good amount of, it, there is a, a click. As this like a grating click as you get this thing to uh, rotate and yeah it has turned there was a grating click it seems like a push 
Uh, would you like Vosmek to push, or Piero like to assist, or do you want to push from the shoulders, or what? Oh, we don't have too much leverage from up here, so uh, I guess someone else push. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, Vosmek will be impatient, and as soon as he <laughs> hears the click, will begin to push. It's not really going anywhere. Piero? Mm-hmm. Yes. Sure. Push. Right. Help push. Help me push. Alrighty. Okay. And would anyone else like to help push as well? Yeah, I can I can try, but I don't think I can do much from up there. Yeah, I would suggest people that are like have a strength over twelve, maybe. Like <laughs> strong <Ooh>. people. <laughs> oh that is <laughs> Vinny's that is gonna bad. try, but it's just not gonna amount to anything. Yeah, okay. I, ten. I mean yeah, you can roll. We'll see what happens. You could roll really well. Okay. Uh, but roll. Piero, if you would roll. Uh we'll make a roll. Ah, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> twenty-one. Oh, that's wow. pretty good. Natural oh, one minus one. So. <laughs> gotcha. As my, as my one looking, as my one looking aid, did he? <laughs> okay, listen, <laughs> hey, old shit. <laughs> I got a nat twenty uh, first. That's all that matters. Furia, did you roll? <laughs> uh, pardon? Did you roll? Uh, Furia, uh, did you roll the check or? Yeah, I got ten. Nine? Okay. Yeah. So. One of the notable things that occurs is Finny comes forward as Vosmik is pushing and also pushes and succeeds in mostly just pushing himself almost off of Vosmik. <laughs> uh, it just quickly turns into like a big heaving push and it's just whoa, 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 and he stabilizes himself. Vosmik does not seem to uh, accomplish much at all in pushing well, but Piero pushing really hard is able to get the door to move eh, just a small you know, couple centi couple centimeters uh, <laughs> about an inch or so and it just kind of just opens just a little bit and then it is able to move around a little bit although grating you can hear it like a grinding uh, move within that area as it kind of bounces back and forth as it's clearly pushing against something. It's likely judging from the grating and from the smell of dirt and from the dustiness underneath the door and from a little bit coming in from above it's likely that this door is pushing into a caved in section. Well. well back out to the south then I guess. Uh, yeah, People I for yeah. going through the north was a good idea. I had a feeling, I had a feeling north was just gonna be pointless, but no. no. I mean, we're still gonna have to deal with that pit trap that I fell in. And it's miraculously somehow survived. Now, hopefully, this time I don't fall for a second one. One would Fingers hope. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so yeah, I reckon let's take out, uh, let's go out the south door and turn right of the portcullis. Do you want to take anything with you? The metal itself, the one that we take from the crucible, how, in the in the realm of heaviness, how heavy is it? Very, I think you, it was. <laughs> do you want to go up and grab it? Keeping in mind that it was approaching Molten mere minutes ago. Uh, actually, yeah, fair point if it's wasn't, still... Wasn't yeah. it like, six, wasn't it like five or six foot tall, uh, tall of just solid metal though? It was several feet of solid metal. I mean, this thing is. Yeah, I don't think this thing is that. going to best case be very, like hundreds of pounds. This is going to be very heavy. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're moving it very far. <laughs> I wish I could save some metal, but safe to say I can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you guys can come back for it later. You can break off pieces and whatnot. But this, it essentially. You think that wherever the state that it was in with the crucible before would have been a lot better because it likely was round in the crucible. You could have maybe rolled it, yeah. but now that it has mostly molten, it's entirely asymmetrical. There's <laughs> no way you're rolling this thing. It's like a imagine like a log of butter that has been melted part way and then resolidified. It's just this parabola shaped um, that is 
there's no way <laughs> you're gonna get this out. Not a parabola, excuse me. Well, anyway, like a bell curve shape. Like, there's no way you're mm. gonna be able to pull this out or get it out easily. It's like the, it's amongst the least convenient shapes to ever possibly move material. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Fair enough. We, we can come back for it later if need be, but... But you do have the various tools that are there, including the pokey stick, which was just debuted very well as a door opener. Uh, and then you have the large leather aprons you could potentially make use of. I'm just, just throwing out a, the different things, making sure everybody knows. Plus, there's a lot of chains, chain hoists, and um, parts of the control for listing, uh, lifting the crucible. There's stuff there. But, you know, just making sure everybody knows what's on the board. Uh, but, I mean, let's keep exploring. I mean, if we ever get time or if we ever want to, we could always come back and possibly salvage this room. Yeah. You ever need a spear? <laughs> yeah, true. We've got decent spin mm -hmm. Gigantic fireplace poker. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so head out, um, right, the south door and then head up the east path of the giant square? Or are we going, like, all the way back around to Port Callas area? Uh, try yeah. to go, um, that's fallen in. Maybe we have to go to that side one. Go to the right. So up and then to the yeah. I yeah, I was, I was presuming yeah, right. we were going south and then like immediately taking the next right, like going up the side of the uh the the track. Of large area. Yep. Yeah. Towards to towards right. where the pitfall thing was. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would suggest. Um, and then we can see if we can uh, action anything to. Get over. Yeah. Uh, if I'm going first, or if anyone else is going first, I'd recommend like tapping Grand front of you. Actually, you know what? Fuck, I'll just go first. <laughs> we we could. Could. That way, I'll, I'll go first and just tap the Grand in front. You know, try and listen out for a, yeah. like a hollow section of the floor. So going up that trap. right side corridor? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh. <laughs> Slowly proceeding forward. Do you want to... In terms of... Are you just waiting... On the assumption that before... What you stepped on was essentially a cloth... That was disguised as the cut stones. Oh. In that any push on that cloth... That caused it to fall in... Most certainly would have resulted in... You know, if you had been tapping it with a stick... You would have immediately told the difference... Mm. Are you just trying to determine if where you're stepping is a cloth? Or are you trying to determine some sort of a hollowness of what's below? Like, are, what are you, what level of discernment are you trying to find in terms of the clicks and taps of the pushing? Um, or are you just trying I'd, to see if it's solid? Yeah, I'll, I'll try and to see if it's solid or not. Like, if it sounds okay. hollow, I'll probably hear it. And then if it's cloth or something, then it's like, if I tap it, it will go down a bit, so... Okay. Are you using your cane? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just tapping along with the cane. Tapping along with the cane. Slowly moving your way up. You can continue to see the large frozen waterfall that leads into a frozen pool, or likely did lead when there was water flowing within it, although. There does appear to still be water flowing just underneath the ice uh, through the various cracks in this big thing. I don't know. Uh, and you can see the underneath the darkness all around it. But tapping and tapping and tapping along, you go past one window and then the second window. And when you get to the third window, it continues to be solid. And then you get past it. And then soon find yourself looking over the pit trap that almost kills you. Or mm. not you, but Pierre. One, yeah, yeah. The group. One so plus. one suggestion: we uh, tie a rope around Finny, we throw Finny over the trap, and then can find something to tie the rope to. Are you able to throw me <laughs> ten feet? All of us together, I'm sure we could manage. I don't like That's this a idea. Great way to find out. I don't yeah, like this idea. You only want two to throw them though, one on each side, so you get the right momentum. You're not gonna say no to this one. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure why, but you know, something's just telling me no. You have a rope around you. I mean, you'd be safe. Ah, yeah, it's also a pit filled with uh, poisonous spikes. Uh, gonna say no. How do you know the poisonous? Uh, because Pierre fell in it. <laughs> Wow, that answers that. Okay. Landed <laughs> right on one of the spikes. Yeah. Hmm. I thought it was two Actually, of them. two of them. Yeah. Yeah, he landed right on two of them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thank God it wasn't poisoned or I'd be doomed. Can we see anything over the uh, pitfall? Yeah, what's over the other side of it? Continuing on the other side. North. On the other side, continuing north, is a hallway that extends into darkness. You could cast light on a small object, throw it on the other side, and then that watch where the light goes to determine more. Hmm? I assume that would require a rest, right? No. No, you just cast light. Yeah, let's cantrip. You can cast cantrips as much as you want. Really? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah, so, uh, Vosmic demands, like, uh, Finny, give me one of those balls. Yep, sure. Chuck them up one of the uh, ball bearings. Bit small, I would have thought. But... Uh, you mean in your face? <laughs> he uh, catches it and then casts light on the ball bearing, which removes the light from Piero's shield. Uh, but now all of the light in this dungeon is coming from this ball, and he throws it towards the other side, and you hear it clink, clack, clatter as it goes down the stone corridor bouncing and hopping in glorious light uh, and you can see that the hallway about 40 feet on the other side of the pit has collapsed mm. but you do see uh, turns off to the left and to the right before that and so potentially if you get across there could be good things there uh, all right. Well, with the with the corners of this old segment we're in, would it be easy enough to like shimmy around the corner of the pit trap at all, or like shimmy round onto the right path, like the east path, and then from there shimmy round onto the north one? Potentially, yeah, and not necessarily even a shimmy, but you could potentially leap across the corner or extend something from one side to the other because of course the vast majority of the square if you can imagine it is kind of cut in it's almost perfect yeah um, they removed the stones in this area and then dug in where the stones were and the stones were pretty evenly aligned and so there's not really a lot of room to carefully move because in terms of handholds there's not a lot yeah. you could maybe establish a handhold that could help and you can because it's just a corner you can stand in such a way that you got one foot on one side and one foot on the other side and if people are holding you then you can have a free hand on the other side to potentially create a handhold or something or look like it's it's doable i mean it's not it's not inconceivable hmm. but it would be one of those things where you wouldn't be able to just do it on your own because uh, without a handhold because the walls are pretty smooth stone for the most part and yeah, yeah it's it is not easy uh, do I try and get uh, Piero or Vosmic to try and smack a handhold into the wall with a lot of pokey sticks or something so we'd have to go back to get the pokey stick I thought we brought one of us didn't we uh, no, we left it in the room, but yeah. well, I, could, I can head back and quickly grab one. Um, or try to. <laughs> also, um, we're on the south side of this pit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to get to the left or the right to be able to get to the north. Yeah. yeah. So uh, should we just take the long way around? Yeah, to cross it twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> long way around, go to the uh, west side. I don't know. We only have to cross it once. But no, we couldn't get through the uh, the door. Oh, sorry, no, the west side. Yeah, sorry, I was thinking east for some reason. Mm. My bad. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I reckon if we do use the poker and see if we can try to get um, like a grip hole or something, so we can. Well, 
actually, I mean, is it is it thick enough that somebody could technically walk on it? The poker? Yes. How long is it? Uh, no, it's, thick. It's some kind of iron. It's very strong. Potentially, yeah, someone might be able to walk on it. Um, it's not something I would want to do. <laughs> like, it would be... Like, you volunteering is, the <laughs> <laughs> it's like tight room, uh, tight rope kind of balance territory, you know. Mm. Well, I mean, it's just one of those things that if we do make the poke hole, but uh, make sure to just have something to walk on, just in case, or have just something to land on. <laughs> if one of us falls backwards or something. <laughs> I mean, how how difficult of a jump would it be just to jump from corner to corner? Like. Saying as close it, as possible yeah. to the wall. How difficult of a jump would that be? Is it... It's it's a span, you know. It, well, it would be it would be further than your body length, Finny. Mm. But it would be a bit difficult for me, I reckon. But for everyone else, I reckon it'd be fine. Yeah, it would be the toughest probably, for you, but it's not it's not too difficult. And if you had some kind of a handhold, it would be much easier. If you had maybe even some rope going across that would be plenty easy um but you know it's not super difficult unless you're doing it without any sort of assistance or tools yeah um, in which case that becomes more difficult but if it's just leaping from one end to the other or from one corner to the other yeah that's totally fine that's that's doable that's only a couple of feet you know maybe like at uh, about at the a little more than a well, more than a meter. Maybe like a meter and a half is like the typical jump. Because if you cut close to the corner, you hit the corner, you fall in the spikes. Mm. So you gotta avoid the corner and leap from one end to the other, or from one corner to the other. And that's certainly much shorter than leaping from one edge to the other edge. Which is Yeah, I, was, I definitely large. wasn't suggesting edge to edge. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... But, yeah. I mean, up to you. Pierre, do you want to head back, get a pokey stick, try and make handhold, or what do you want to do? Uh, yeah, I, I probably reckon just handhold. Okay. Because I don't, uh, don't really want to stay at this tiny little segment of the map for an entire hour, so if we could speed things along just a little bit. <laughs> so you've just been standing here wondering how to get across this for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to go back south, and then get the large, oversized fireplace poker come back with it um, also I'll have it does are you going back alone Piero I can come with I just can't really help carry it it'd probably be better for someone else to go can go with you the He's reason I'm asking is a consideration of light because before at least Vosmic was just putting light on things I don't know if Mercedes or Piero have light to add but Vosmic quick will get his quick light in question. one area um, was Piero able to hold and carry one of these, like, on his own easy enough, or yeah, it require yeah, assistance? It, yeah, he can hold it and carry it on his own. It's just a big rod of metal. It, it, weighs, mm. it weighs a lot, but it's not so daunting that it's no. unwieldable. In terms of if that's the spinning case, it would... or attacking with it, that would mm. be very difficult. But just carrying it? No, that's not a problem. Alright, well, if that's the case, I'll just go down. I've got a lantern, so. Okay. Uh, and so. I mean, you, you light the lantern then? Yeah. yeah. I, I like presume I'd already have hold. it on me, but. Well, yeah, it's just a question of whether or not you had it lit. Because Bosmic was using light magically. In yeah, true. Sure. Fair point. Um, yeah, All it probably right. wasn't lit then. Yeah, Mercedes has light too, I'm pretty sure. Say. Yeah. So, I mean, if, you if you've know, got a light cantrip, then yeah, use that instead. Um, exactly. Be better than wasting Just oil. Them up. So, Vosmic will reestablish his light on Piero's shield. And then, as Piero goes off to get the pokey thing and whoever else goes with him, then Mercedes can establish a light here so that the, no one group is in darkness. Yeah. Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll cast... I'll go up here. I'm fine with that. Uh, and I'll cast light on my staff. <laughs> yeah, you do. Alright, so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then. 
some time passes. The giant fireplace poker has been retrieved. You are now standing in a well-lit hallway at the precipice of uh, the pit of spikes. How do you want to use this thing? Are we still on the south side, or do you guys just want to take the long way to the left, assuming you already cleared it? I mean, we could take the left side, but it's got to be a, a while just to get it back around. Well, if you already cleared it, I'm pretty sure we don't have to go through all of that again, right? Uh... <laughs> Sorry, ignore my cat just losing her fucking mind. Like, just just don't mind that. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, well, at least if we bank repulse um, on this side, if the left side ever becomes, and if we ever get over swarmed, we could possibly take this trip uh, back just in case. Or... Yeah, the problem is, though, you have twice as many chances of failure <laughs> being on the south side. True. And knowing your roles, you might not want... <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, one of those things that as, as soon as we get somebody on the other side, they can also help, um, yeah, make sure they won't fall off or fall into the pit, right? Mm-hmm. Except that for they might correct. take them with them. Um, there is also that possibility. It is a That's possible. also correct. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly... The, the summation is correct. It, there's twice as many chances for failure because you're going over the pit twice, at least, as opposed to once. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I vote for going on the west side. I mean, we have the poker here. Uh, it's, I doubt it reaches I mean, 10 meters across, though. So. I mean, well, it's not 10 meters across. It's. Uh, I know, you're doing the edges. About but... 3 meters. Yeah, Why wouldn't we? It looks like uh, we need to go north. Well, I mean, we go on to we're going to left west side. See if there's anything there because we couldn't open up the door to the north side. Okay. Um, look, honestly, if we want to see on what's on the west side of uh, wait, no, not the east side of what's um at this intersection. We kind of have to, you know, use the poker, or... Why do we not just go to the west side, cast a light thing down there, and figure out that it is most likely just a corridor that loops back around <laughs> to the north side of the door Cause that of makes the more room sense. we were just in? There's enough collapsed um, ceilings that you don't even have to waste ball bearings or whatever if you just wanted a piece of debris. I've got, I've got a thousand ball bearings, I guess. Never mind, okay. <laughs> Technically, it's like 997. Uh, 994, oh. actually. Oh, my goodness, you've been industrious. I, I throw a few during Papa Pietro's thing. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So, how do you be stealthy when you rattle? Going very slowly, sometimes can help. <laughs> but it, if you You probably have... sound like a box of Tic Tacs. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, he, he handles it pretty well. It's got a, a decent pouch. I mean, if he shakes it a lot, then yeah, it can make a little bit of noise. But beyond we that, shake him a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a tightly cinched leather sout. It's <laughs> never really a problem. Just magic. We'll say that. <laughs> magic. No, it's not magic. You know, it's, just, it's magic now. <laughs> it's just normal. Totally normal. You ignore yeah, it by still... the power of imagination. I still vote for going to the west, and then we can do a uh, Finney's suggestion. Yeah, we can see, see what we can see what pointless path is down to the east, which I'm not even sure pointless. is pointless, and then we'll go to the north. Yeah, we'll probably just lead up to it anyway, the north, uh, northern right passage. All right. So, in terms of the pathways that you want to go, you know, actually, going that way. come to think of it, there's no real way easy to get to the west path there. Why don't we just go through the east door in the portcullis room? That's what I say. That's what I'm thinking, like, that's closer Wait. at this point. Huh? Or what the, room is that you're referring to? The, like, middle of the top area. It's like one square's got, like, a grate over it. 
Yeah, that's, yeah that's, I've, a, that's a portcullis. I assumed thing. you guys tried that already. Yeah, we've seen the portcullis, but we've not gone through the door to the east of that room yet. So. Yeah, I assumed it was, like, locked because I didn't know why it was unexplored. Uh, <laughs> so, well, why, why I just go... don't think we went through that. So. Oh. The northeast corridor. Can we don't go that way? The furthest northeast one. Which one? Okay. The northeast mm. door. Corridor. Oh, off of the room, like that we're, far... we're, we're, we yeah, we try we tried to open that door. It's locked. We can open it. No, uh, figure up north where we're at at the moment. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Let me and try it. Uh, yeah, the big square room. We're at the northern, uh, northeastern section. That square at the intersection. Yeah. Is a trap. A pitfall. Yeah, there's a uh, pitfall trap there. We currently are sovereign of that. Um, we are thinking about going to down south, going all the way west, going north, and then going all the way north, I mean, and then going uh, east into that room, and then checking that one unexplored uh, corridor. Okay. But don't, why don't you have to do the pitfall trap eventually anyway, if it just goes uh, we across can... there? If that door opens, we can potentially just avoid it. Yeah, we could just avoid it. So. Yeah. I just, because I wasn't here when you guys explored that, yeah. I thought it was locked, so I didn't even mention no, it. No, I, I just don't think we ever looped back around to that one, actually, so. No, uh, we, we well, went through the... Go -to yeah, we went through the south right? door of the portcullis room, and then just, that's it. <laughs> Pretty much. Is the portcullis locked? Uh, like... It's closed at the moment. It was described as like the holes in it were big enough that I could probably squeeze through it. But... <laughs> of course. <laughs> Your mangled body. Uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, that's where you throw me. You try and get me through one of the holes. If you get me sliding through one of the holes, it's a point to you. Well done. You win. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's not actually do this. <laughs> so, where did you guys discover traps earlier? I'm gonna. I'm marking up the map that shows oh, okay. where you guys have found traps. Because there's no point in hiding it now. Because uh, it's part of the know. memory now. Yeah. Oh, well, should we head to um? Head At to least the portcullis room then. Yeah, we will. Uh, ideally, avoiding the room that had the yeah the far left one oh, with so the big X okay. in it, the collapse room. Yeah, so these we go... are the three traps that you <laughs> found. We go every mm. in the direction, just not that. So the collapse room, and then north of that, and Trap. then east. Yeah, so the southwestmost one, the small one there, was a net trap that's been triggered already. Um, the big one slightly above that was like a dangerous room of like you know, the roof was worried about caving in. It's still dangerous, and, right? Yeah, it's still dangerous. Yeah, so then we'll go for that collapse yep. room, and then north, and then east. Alright, so looping around, going along the long hallway on the south, leaving the area of the frozen waterfall, coming through the uh, various decorated rooms, or rooms that were previously decorated, now of which there are only small chunks of plaster hanging on cut stone walls, going into the old remains of a crashed in warehouse, a storeroom of some kind. Uh, to avoid the fallen, or rather potentially able to be fallen, room that is to the south of where the kobolds were. Going north out of the storeroom, past the stairwell that is frozen, where you had found the bag of our poor druid friend. Uh, going further north, past the large giant statues of dwarven proportions, of some sort of a, a serving maid and a blacksmith past the frankly stinking and completely torn up corpse of a yeti turning right down the T hallway uh, the sort of t-bone hallway into the large room with a portacullis to the north and the three separate doors it is very cold stinks of yeti piss and shit and death and uh, it is open to above, some snow is flittering into the room from the large, gaping, dark hole above. And you know the door to the south leads to the long hallway, but you do not know the door to the east. 
and the portcullis to the north still stand strong. Uh, so opening that east door, or through the portcullis, or south to the pit trap again. We're going to go for the east door, but we'll probably take some precautions, um, because we don't want to wind up in whatever sadistic trap. Mm. That could be it. <laughs> I'm um, going to try not to take offense at that. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so what does the door or passage look like? It looks exactly like every other door. The big uh, summer neighborhood of about 8 feet wide, 12 feet tall, with okay, a and large... So it's a push? It appears to be a push door with a large and black iron okay. ring on the left side that, judging from the way that you have seen them open now, it seems that the ring can be used as a door pull and also it is part of a sort of door knob where it rotates one direction or the other swinging inward to the rest of the door to seemingly unlock it all right so we'll do the same method as before um mm -hmm. that spinny can go on my shoulders i don't care um try to open or what is it twist the uh handle or whatever yeah. before uh -huh. pushing it. Would it not be better if I go in like Vosmic or Piero's? Eh, whatever. I'm here. I'm willing. Really not much of a weight to them in comparison, so. Oh, what are you trying to say? Oh, and what's your strength modifier? What's I'm your strength? 12. Okay, okay. I thought it was less than that. My bad. My apologies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty sure Vosmic's stronger though. So Vosmic up. Up, please. Fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Bosmic can't want to be dropped. Preference. Up, please. <laughs> Bosmic supplies the elevator, and the uh, the people mover brings you up. <laughs> Wee. <the> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the same thing as I've done with like all the other doors. Okay. Yeah, get ready to open, and yeah. All right. I'll this one. Out also feels really stuck oh, no, I it's very cold like really really cold it's quite cold in here that you can also tell that this is the room that piero slipped and fell in because it's so cold mm. and like, you can still see the the piero angel shape on the floor <laughs> section of it it's a bit slick you kind of have to be careful about where you walk not just because the files of yeti dung but also because of the ice, but as you grip onto this handle, it it is so cold, in fact, that on a lot of the others, you can kind of lift the ring, and it's got a lot of movement. On this one, you can't even lift the ring. Huh. Um, so we you know, probably want to use a spell you know, to, to warm it up. up. Yeah, or warm it up. That's a possibility. It, it's entirely possible, just like the southern door, if you recall, that hmm. also appeared to be frosted shut. Uh, this one might take a little bit of effort. Well, I can create a bonfire. <laughs> oh no, not this again. Oh, not this yeah. again. <laughs> Keep your ropes away. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so a bonfire we could use a piece of wood um, just to hold it up for a bit, melt any um, potential ice in it. I mean, uh, the, the door to the south, how was that open again? Was that just, like, open with brute force? Brute or? force. Yeah. Yeah, brute force. I'm pretty sure I was going to do that as well. I mean, we could try the uh, poker <laughs> thing on this door. You know, we've found a stronger so characters. Use heat, well, it just might make it easier. Yeah, right? yeah, it would make it a lot easier because ice freezes in place and you can mm, get, I suppose. You yeah. gotta melt, melt the ice just make, bit. make the check less, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you want to try that. Create a bonfire and by the door handle and see if we can not pour it. Alright, All right. I'll do that. So um, you create a bonfire in front of the door, basically? Yeah. Yeah, it's the it's handle is high, yeah. Right? Yeah, the, the door ring itself is about 8 feet up in the air, so um, somewhere in the equivalent of like 2.5 meters. Uh, yeah, we should have create bonfire, then get a piece of the bonfire and have Finny just hold it up torch to it for a bit 
Would it at that point it's a regular torch not do the job as well? Well, yeah, but I just don't know if anyone has torches. <laughs> I think some people do. Pierre, don't you have torches? Uh, I don't know. That's Unless we've got something to stand it on. Uh, I don't really think so. Yeah, actually, yeah, oh, I, have, I have it. Um, <laughs> I'm like three foot tall. Best of luck with that. <laughs> hey, you go on a uh, boss mix, and then you get a bonfire created on your head, Perfect. and then we're all good. I'll just stay still long enough. <laughs> yeah. Nothing yes. bad will happen. Keep your screams inside, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to uh, hear them. So, yes. <laughs> um, also, whoever was asking, uh, in regards to the torch, I do have one. Do you have anything to light a torch? Uh, tinderbox. Okay. Hey, we're in business. You could yeah. also just throwing this out there. The door. How, how many? Wood. How many? How many feet is that? Red <laughs> the door is made of wood. Uh, uh, oh no! <laughs> you were saying, Mercedes? How many feet is that ring above the? Yeah, about about eight feet up. Uh, yeah, it's about okay. eight feet. About two and a half feet. Uh, so yes, we could technically set the door on fire, but uh, or chop it down. I see this as a win-win. Either the ice melts or the door burns to the ground. Win-win, we get through the door. And makes us warmer, <laughs> so... Hey, win-win-win. Um, and this is a room that is open. Not to worry about yeah, there is a hole in the roof, too, so win-win-win-win. Hell yeah. Like, yeah. Um, this yeah. is only so, wins. Okay, you I'm could good with that. Yeah, start a bonfire, and then uh -huh. just burn the door down. <laughs> yep. Right. Probably take a while. I yeah, presume, I was gonna but... say how good of a timber is it? Probably because if it's a really good timber, it won't catch on fire for a small eternity. It is very good timber and is dense, and it also is coated in some kind of a metal. Uh, you know, they've got a finish in it, and I'll, I'll add too, as you've walked around, there's fertilizer. Well, you have found <laughs> plaster. <laughs> yeah, there is. There is. But you have found like shattered pieces of plaster. You have found uh, damaged pieces of furniture, old, uh, completely rotted in barrels and boxes and all kinds of things like that. But these doors are, in many cases, pristine. They're functioning fine. They're easy to move, most of them at least. And they've fared better than virtually everything else in this entire complex. Maybe the bonfire will work, or maybe it won't. It might not work too well, it might take a while, but these these doors, you've not found one that is damaged nor corroded. I'm thinking maybe just a torch would be easier, you know, it's easier to hold up, and, you know, just hold it next to the ring for a while, or something, maybe, I don't know. Or we could just try and brute force it. We did with the other mm -hmm. one, that seemed to work fine, so. Get our, I still think our... we should at least weaken it a bit. Get our inner arsonist out. <laughs> uh, you okay? Uh, Dollar? I was, so, the good news is, if the bonfire trying to burn down the door doesn't work, it has enough cool air in here, here that it will not take long to uh, have it cool down to touching temperature. So. Hmm? Or it might be so cold that you take what is loose frost melt it into water, and then it freezes into dense ice, making it even worse, depending on how long you wait. It depends how cold it is, too. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to take that risk. Um, good. Um, <laughs> well, uh, what do you reckon, Penny? Has our pyromaniac burned the door, or uh, still go for the lock? I don't know if I to come up... How do we always yeah. manage to come up with the most scuffed ways to open a fucking door? Let's just try and let's just try and brute force it. If nothing yeah, happens, no, no, we'll no, go with option B. Like no, we let's, brute... not, let's not burn it down. Let's we, just we brute it a force bit. the one to the south. Like, and then brute can, force it. We can try <laughs> this one instead. So melt it a bit. Do we want to try and get one of the stronger characters up on another strong character to try and you know, strength-wise brute force it, and then work from there? So I can try, but I don't think I'd go very far. I don't think I did last time either. I don't think I did that. I can't remember. It's been a while. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Yeah, you um. won't hear it, Sam. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, to get Vosmic up on Pierre's shoulders, Pierre up on Vosmic's shoulders, one or the other, and then try and brute force that open, maybe. 
Uh, we're good. Uh, we get boss Mick to go on your shoulders. Oh, that's boss a brilliant has... idea. <laughs> boss Mick says, I call Top Bunk. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, let's get um, let's get boss Mick up on your shoulders. <clears throat> on your shoulders, Piero? <laughs> Yes, yes, we're not putting okay. it on, we're not putting him on fins. Yeah, come on, come on, Vosmik, you can do it. Alright, so Vosmik drops a good deal of his equipment, uh, including taking <laughs> off at least some of the armor to make it a little bit lighter, because otherwise it would just break your spine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then he climbs you like a tree. It is both intimate and disgusting. Um, and he is soon mounted atop you, uh, akin to... Um, well, I, I was just gonna be. Well, anyway, but yeah, he is <laughs> on you, uh, and he will attempt to, to unlock this door and fail. Uh, does anyone know his strength bonus or strength mod? I think it was. Uh, fuck, it was either two or three. Good. It was plus two or that plus three. Plus two. There we go. Yeah, he gets up there and he just. Ah, uh, this thing's stuck. Nobody's gonna be able to open this. And he uh, gets down. Well, that was fun. If any really, really wants to try now, if any really wants to try. So, Bumper? Uh, can I, can I mm. try and quickly scamper up um, Piero? Just try and give it a go real quick. Of course. <laughs> Perfect. Just a regular stone pro, or...? Yeah, strength roll. Oh, I should have imagined that. Too. It was so close to a 17, it rolled to a 3 at the last second. No, that's a, that's a 2. You got... Uh, yep. <laughs> you, win like boss time, Mike, you win this time. You win this time, Boss Mike. may have been right about something. This seems to be stuck. You know, mir miracles do happen. Miracles happen, they like Vaz make being right about something, it's, yeah, miracles happen. Yeah, even a blind squirrel gets laid occasionally, so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, option All right. B, I suppose, um, pyromaniac time, hell yeah. yeah <laughs> Burn yeah. everything down. So, I mean, in terms of options, you want to start a bonfire at the door, do you want to load up the torch, do you want to pack the door with... Yeti dung and set it. Like, what's the plan? Well, that's always a peeling option. <laughs> so he tries to melt a, a bit anyway, the ice. If any would like to pull out his miniature RPG 7, <laughs> that totally <laughs> exists in these times. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, totally. I, I can torch probably a bit of better bet because you can at least hold that up towards where the latch is. So. You could probably have both at the same time. One, two, Eat the bottom of the door and one holding the torch. <laughs> well, the person suppose. standing by might disagree. <laughs> well, as long as they're just a meter away from the bonfire. Hmm. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Well, you always have your endure elements or whatever. Yeah, because it's only got a five. Because the bonfire's only got a five foot range. Man, nah, because that worked so well last time. <laughs> well, that was a rope that was in <laughs> No, I'm talking about the <laughs> the resist elements thing or whatever. Oh. I don't think I used it, did I? I don't know. And you do have a party member that is uh, innately resistant to fire. I wonder who that could be. That's a fair <laughs> point. Alright, um, it says okay. you make the bonfire, and then, Vera, you just stand on top of the bonfire and hold the torch up. Yes, up, next no just, up next we well, just the clothes of my to... character aren't resistant, so no. <laughs> no, you don't have you don't have to stand on the bonfire. Just stand away from the bonfire, but still hold uh, the, tor the torch. And again, Finny sees no issue. <laughs> <laughs> I see, yes, <laughs> see no issue at all. <laughs> hmm. As long as you're five foot away from the fire. How how do you be five foot away and be eight foot up? A hell of a long torch. <laughs> a very long arm. It's a very long torch. One or the other. I say torch. Torch makes more sense. You could, you could strap the torch onto the poker. I mean, could. 
it's long enough that if you strap the torch onto the end of the poker, that you wouldn't even have to hold it. You would just have to keep it from falling over. You would just have to lean it. You could have the end of the torch, or the end of the poker, just on the ground. Why would this you try both like at once, though? Air. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> hmm? So, why would we try and burn the uh, door and do that at the same time, though? Well, either way, you could put the torch on the poker, so yeah. that way you don't have to hold the torch up several feet in the air. We just put it on that, and the torch should be long enough that it can put it right around where the ring is. This is true. So, I've considered you can it. even just kind of lean it against the door, although that's probably not going to be good for the torch in terms of the burn rate. But, but yeah, the, whatever you guys want to do, I'm just saying that is yeah. one <laughs> possibility in terms of how to get the torch there. You could just strap it onto this thing that you brought. My magic duct tape. <laughs> or rope. I think you have duct some you haven't burned yet. <laughs> yeah. Tape made out of duck intestines. So, what are we doing here? Bonfire? And torch? Or just I'd torch? say just torch. Like, yeah, I don't torch. see a reason to burning the bottom half of the door. I just don't see a viable reason to it. You yeah. don't need to burn the door, you just need like, to melt the, the latch is the thing that's <laughs> stuck, though. So dumb. <laughs> the latch is what's stuck. Yes, just okay. use it directly on the uh, latch. Yeah. Well, the bottom area might be sealed, too. I mean, if we can at least turn the latch, we can have someone barge into the door. I yeah, burn them. Burn them all. If we can't even turn the latch, we're not getting the door open. Like... Well, the thing is, um, the why is this even up then... to discussion? <laughs> but so, you know, T playing fire resistant. Um, if I hold the torch, like get up on someone or whatever, um, then I can try to open the door afterwards. Whereas, so even if it is a bit hot, you know, a bit more manageable than if a, mm. a halfling were to try it. That's fair enough. So I suggest I hold the torch and I try to open the door. Uh, so I yep, just need all right, I'm fine someone to jump on. Well, I mean, okay. you wouldn't you wouldn't need someone to jump on to hold the torch up there. Oh well, it's eight feet to try and open it afterwards. I still do. Yeah, yeah afterwards, yeah, you'd need to hop on someone, but just holding yeah. the torch there to melt the ice, you wouldn't need that. I just might as well do both at once, right? Yeah, but you might have to be holding the torch there for twenty minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how long? That's it? a matter of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> With the power of imagination, it takes five seconds. <laughs> and it goes by in the blink of an eye. Um, I guess. Fine. If that's what you all want to do. I'm fine with this. Okay. I'm still confused on so, how this has taken like 15 minutes to I figure don't out a plan of a door, but. It ended right. up being my first suggestion, too, so... <laughs> so, you're gonna get on top of somebody's shoulders and hold the torch up to the ring, right? I, I don't know anymore. We're going okay. to strap it to a poker holding up. Okay, you're gonna strap it to the poker, okay. Was that Somebody the made... plan? <laughs> it is now, because you guys have made me do everything. Oh my god, fuck it, whatever, that'll do. I don't care, can we move yeah. on? We've been here for so long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to go for the dog, God damn it! <laughs> can I get a sleight of hand check for tying the knot of trying to can secure I, the Can I do torch? that, actually? Can yeah, I then you try can and tie the knot. Yeah, sure. Cool. I'll try and scare Not that. master. The that boy's is... scared. Oh, son of a... 13, whatever. It's not actually okay. bad, but... A again, it was so close to such a high number and then just tilted over last second. Hell oh. yeah. Uh, well. man. Hopefully, you have a problem. Oh, hoping. <laughs> okay. And so you're just gonna stand there, holding this, or just keeping this thing from falling over, just holding the torch underneath the ring? Yes. Okay. How long do you want to hold the torch underneath the ring? The torch, I if... think, lasts, what, like an hour or two? Yeah, an hour. 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Okay. You hold it under it for 15 minutes. You just keep the torch in the... Because imagine it... It's like... A, let me see if I can find a picture or something. Uh, let's see here. Yep, 
It's something akin to. It looks like. Uh, oh, how dare you, Pottery Barn! <laughs> That's so I mean, whatever, I gotta do what I gotta do. Uh, so, it's akin to. I'm gonna put this in useful images. It kind of like this, but there's not like a lock section. And so it's just this kind of big ring that's sticking out of the metal. And so where are you going to be putting the flame? Is it going to be at the bottom of the ring? Is it going to be at the top of the ring, which is a sort of turn mechanism? It's going to be in the middle where the M would be. Okay. So trying to kind of get it into there as best you can. Are you going to try and, like, lift? Is there going to be some mechanism where you're going to... I mean, essentially, you're just kind of pushing it in from the side or are you lifting the ring or oh uh, i'm so torch end in the middle um having the fire fla the flames lift the top to hopefully melt anything there and the proximity should make sure that if it's stuck at the bottom um where the handle is should melt any ice that is there if mm. Okay, so you have this torch lit for 15 minutes. What do you want to do now? Uh, pass it to Vinny and jump on Bolsmith's uh, shoulders, I guess. Wait, are, are you giving the iron poker to Finny? <laughs> Finny falls to the ground with it. But, oh, like crap. crushing his hand it's out still of the of thing. It. Right. I, okay. Three times larger. Than I Finny. cannot hold <laughs> this thing. Fine, Per Pero. <laughs> Pero. <laughs> Forgetting that it's attached to that. Yes. Um, yeah. It's just like here you go, Finny, and then it's Finny's just like uh, sets him on fire, <laughs> starting to fall over like a tree, but Piero is able to support it. <laughs> So imagine yeah, I try and grab fun. it as it's like, you know, Fira just pushes it off to me. I try and grab it and then just fall back with it as it falls to the ground. Basically, yeah, it's just yeah. a big, heavy thing. Anyway, but uh, you can very quickly <laughs> protect him, Fiero, and be able to handle it. And so, uh, Fiero, uh, or Fira, uh, you want to, if you want to get on top of Osmond's shoulders, you certainly can. And try to get up there and, yeah. So, yes. You're up there. It's there. It's in front of you. I, uh, good, good news. It is quite warm to the touch, but you're fairly resistant and it is cooling down quickly. You're able to grasp the bottom of the ring. And where before, Finny couldn't even move the bottom of the ring, this is good. You can move You can move it back and forth and kind of pull on it a bit. So that's, that's a plus. Something definitely happened. Okay, I uh, try in the regular manner of opening it that I saw uh, Finny do earlier. Okay, you start <laughs> to move it. You stop. You know, you feel the resistance. You're not sure if this is normal or not. Uh, so go ahead and make a strength check to try and see. You know, just kind of push because you don't really know <laughs> what it takes. You've never opened one of these before. You're not quite sure if. It's something that's easy or light. You just kind of... It's never been any different for you. Yeah, I got a 6. I was so close to a 19. <laughs> so close. Okay. It always uh, happens. Yep. As you turn it, it... Yeah, it's not moving. Hmm. Vazimek, you want to go at this <laughs> again? It's been softened up for you, buddy. Will it uh, burn his hand at all? Uh, I don't know. That'll be for him to find out. Uh, can I attempt again, or is that it? Uh, he, hmm. It's kind of tricky. There's sort of an argument in this sort of a sense that attempting again and again and again, sometimes it can be measured as a gap of time. The, the reason being is yeah. that if, if, we, if it was essentially just, oh, I'm just going to keep rolling until I succeed, well, then there's no point in the roll. Yeah, it's a bit metagame, yeah. yeah. Indeed. Yeah. It depends on if a person, yes, yeah, circumstances, if they know they messed up by slipping or stuff, but indeed. Um, if you do person... something 
if you do something to change the situation, then I'll potentially do it. Like I'll if if there's yeah, something the, that's different, then the yeah. The only logical thing would be someone uh, like, trying to poker then try and twist it to poker. Well, I would assume another logical thing would be someone else help instead of one person do it. Try and get two people on it. So you're gonna get two people on Bosmic's shoulders, or you're gonna get Finny up on top of Piero? Piero, one up. <laughs> Piero, yeah. one up. Let me up. All right. I mean, Let's get Finny up there. <clears throat> it makes more sense to me than trying to use a uh, harder to manage uh, poker to Bad try and open it. Bad one. Who's going to handle the torch poker combo now? Or Piero, are you gonna hold it while also supporting Finny? Uh, I can be... probably take it. Oh yeah. Okay. I think it's... Yeah, Mercedes can. Yeah. You can pass it off I'll turn to Mercedes um, as Piero and Vosnik and Finny and Furia <laughs> bundle in a Mercedes. Maybe just a thought crosses that a bonfire right there <laughs> <laughs> solves so many problems in this whole place. Would be yours. I swear, if we if there's a fire in the town we're in. We're gonna blame Bonesmith. I think it's gonna be one of us. <laughs> this, this whole place, all of its treasures, all of its mysteries, all of its power, could be yours just with really? one bonfire. Anyway, and, uh, yeah, and yes. then, uh, so oh no! And just clarifying, is uh, the torch used up yet, or? Uh, no, it's only been burning minutes. for. Yeah, it's only been burning for about fifteen to twenty minutes. Oh, well, oh. I'll just prematurely make sure to get rid of it. Hmm. Yeah, well, you could if you want. You could smother it and save it. Oh, yeah, actually. Uh, well, it's the uh, last one we have, isn't it? No, no, I still have, like, eight more. Okay. Finny, do you have any eight. gloves? Uh, I... Uh, I don't know. We're going to consult my character art for this one. Um, yes, <laughs> my character art does have gloves, so I'm gonna go with yes. Yeah, I'm... Please. Please put I'm gonna on. need to ask you to look at your character sheet. Uh, is it is gloves a specific thing? I would have it just come <laughs> under regular common clothes or something, perhaps. Depends on types of gloves. <laughs> For we you know you could be just wearing linen. I mean, I don't have any gloves in here. I would, I would have thought I would just come under like common clothes or something, but. I mean, we do have the other room with fire resistant clothing and stuff. I mean, um, well, I'm sure what it has type gloves. of what type of gloves? Because in terms of common clothing, yeah, some people might wear gloves, but that's not necessarily... When most people think common clothing, we're talking like just like shirt, basically like tunic and pants. Mm. I think, yeah, I, I, think they're, I think they're just like thin leather gloves or something. It's like they're, they're not okay. something that would really protect from fire too much. So um, how long would it take to get back into the foundry type room? Can I can I just briefly touch the ring and see if it's hot? Like not hold my hand on it, just briefly tap it and see if it's hot. It's barely warm. It's cooler than a hot mug. There we go. Cool. Done deal. Okay. I'm grabbing it. Uh, and it would take several minutes to get back to the furnace room. Or to the boiler room, essentially, yeah. that room. Done deal. If I can grab it, I'll grab it. Okay. Yeah, you can grab it. Cool. Uh, so do okay. I try and open this again? Together this time. <laughs> Together! Go ahead and roll again. Strength checks from both of you. It's a bit bad. 20. That's a, that's a 10 from me. Not a natural 20, but 20. Uh, it... Uh, <clears throat> quickly you can hear kind of crack uh, as whatever was holding it in is released. You quickly open it. And ta-da! You got it unlatched. And it, as push? you unlatch it, it just seems stuck. Like the ring is turned, and now it's just there. That's strange. But it's a push door, so now would be the time to push. Okay. Um, you can push while on the shoulders of Piero and Bosmic, but it probably won't do you as well. <laughs> Not suggested. <laughs> yeah. We topple yeah. over. It uh, had, if, we, if we let go of the ring, does it sustain place, or...? Yeah, like, you let go of it, it's it's just yeah. there. It's staying. Good. Box of May, I'm gonna hop down then. Yeah, I hop down as well. I'll help All push right. the oh, door. I can help push, yeah. Um, I'm assuming the guys were 
Han can also push. Yep. So strength checks to all those that are helping to push the door. I'm helping. Uh, Why nine. is that one a better? That's 18 from me. Nine. Nine. I'm not at speaking least, at least it's not At least it's not a one. Mm hmm. Sure. Okay. The door does. Uh, it has kind of a, a push to it a little bit, a little bit of a give, and you can begin to kind of get it to move a little bit. You see the ring move. Although it doesn't fully reset, it's like half reset, and then you're able to push it a little bit further, and once it starts to move, it's a little bit, almost feels like it has more resistance, like heavier than a lot of the other doors, but it's obviously not heavier, but now soon enough, the door does open, and reveals on the other side, through the various uh, magical lights and also a burning torch on the end of a pike type deal. Uh, it reveals a relatively large room. It's about 30 feet wide and about 40 feet deep. And there's a kind of... Like, not quite a fountain, but more like a reflecting pool that is within the middle. And it is completely frozen with blue and uh, white kind of color to it. That's gleaming off. Uh, not so much gleaming, but... Uh, coming off in the distance, and you can also see some benches on either side that are just massive. They come up to most of your shoulders. Um, is there any of our entrances or like door? There ways? is. It continues off into the darkness on the other side, which one could reasonably assume. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is the other end. And that's the only doorway. Uh, besides the one you've come through, and yep. unless there is something secretive that you have not found yet, this is the only apparent doorway. Okay. So, create bonfire on the reflecting pool. <laughs> Wait, <what>? <laughs> Why <laughs> not, All right? right. <laughs> Alright. Uh, are we going to do that? And at, this sure. rate, at this rate, it's turning into a fucking RuneScape lobby with just bonfires, as far as the eye can see. Hey, this will be our I first. I already lit one bonfire. bonfire. <laughs> yeah. and, and the rate it's gonna go, though, this is gonna be bonfire, 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 bonfire. It's everywhere. Until there's no more ice, you know? Alright. I like a bonfire on. I was gonna say, we're on a mountain, so. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just picturing, like, you know, RuneScape, like Grand Exchange, people trying to level up their fire making skills. They just leave, like, trails of bonfires, just, like, as far as the eye can see. <laughs> That's just the first thing that came to mind. Hmm. Alright. So, what would you like to do? Yeah, so Mercedes just yeah, lit a bonfire on top of the reflecting pool. Okay. What would you like to do now? I yeah, there's guess... now a bonfire on top of this reflecting pool. Nothing else takes um, you. I want to take that poker and start try and chip away at the ice and see how thick it is. Okay. Now you take the poker and begin to try and jab it down. The torch gets in the way and smashes oh. a bit. <laughs> well, I should have... Uh, ignites yeah. the remainder of the rope on the fire that's now on the ice, uh, destroying both the torch and the rope. But cool. as you chip Wasn't away at the ice, <laughs> putting chunks of uh, little bits of ice going from uh, side to side, little pieces of ember from a torch and rope going from side to side, just making a total mess of things, uh, you do so. Cool. Um, yep. I guess I can take off the garbage remaining stuff uh, from this point. Uh, it pretty much burns off pretty easily in the bonfire. Okay. Well, it wasn't my rope either, so... <laughs> you sure it wasn't? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, you tied the knot, Finny, so... I presume someone else gave me the rope, though. Uh, no, I sure didn't. Know. Mine is still I, hanging in the... I never specified I was using my own rope for that. <laughs> well, I presume I someone else was like already <laughs> got rope <laughs> <laughs> Did you Somebody die? has to subtract some rope. I don't care who. 
but rope has been used and rope has been destroyed. Fair enough. I will. I'll use a bit. Uh, how much? I mean, how much would you reckon we probably used? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I probably no more than like two feet. Okay. I'll, I'll say about forty-seven feet and. Forty-seven? Oh, okay, you mean you have forty-seven left? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that makes that, more sense. That's including, like, the foot you lost on the the mechanism, right? Or Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You guys and, are just being <laughs> real rough on these ropes. By the time we get out of here, Pierre's gonna have, like, half a meter worth of rope left in. By the time we get out of here, we're gonna be frozen. Rope <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is right. Is. Anyway, so, do you want to continue to wait until the pool melts, or do you want to do something else? Does it seem like anything is uh, happening to it, or is it still magically well, it's, frozen? It's ice with a fire on top of it. I mean, it's it's not magically frozen. It's just frozen. Okay. It's very. It's freezing cold in here. It's probably like. Uh, how do you guys want Fahrenheit or Celsius? <laughs> Celsius. Celsius. Just probably okay. easier. Yeah. Well, easier for you, but um, <laughs> in terms of Celsius, it's maybe like negative twenty, negative thirty. Yikes! That's uh, yeah. cold. Yeah, it's it's very cold. Well, it's a good thing I have my uh, what is it rug or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thumbs up to that. In terms of Fahrenheit, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like negative, uh, negative ten degrees or so. It's very cold. So Celsius. Fahrenheit is a garbage measuring system. Mm, yes, well, agreed. I agree. <laughs> Some people may say that. <laughs> Most of the world would say that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, all I'm gonna say is, uh, <laughs> below freezing is still in the positive numbers, which makes literally no sense, so uh, I'm just, just gonna put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> Why would, that's assuming that, well, Celsius is just a temperature gradient based on water, why should we base it on water? Is it only based on water? I didn't mm -hmm. think it was. Zero is the freezing point, and 100 is the boiling point. Why should we make a temperature based on water? Uh, I'm just saying. That that it's... Like <laughs> but what's that Fahrenheit based off? Yeah, <laughs> what is that even based off of? Other random, things. random numbers. <laughs> the, the only thing I know actually that is interesting about both is negative 40, I think, for blue. Yeah, there's is 40 the exact same. There's 40, minus 40 Fahrenheit. Yeah, which again, yeah. somehow that works as well, but. We could use Kelvin, I guess. That'd be a better. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. Alright. Anyways. <laughs> nice. Talking about freedom units. The map. Uh. <laughs> Alright, so, what do you guys want to do? Well, while waiting for the pool of ice to possibly uh, be, um, to warm up, um, is there anything noticeable in the room? Benches? There's Water. a magical torch, right? Magical what? Nope. There's no magical torch? Wait, so actually, I'm, 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 I'm missing. Why are we waiting for this pool of ice to melt? I was ah. the the of ice. <laughs> I thought you said there was some magical light. No. No. Well, magical light is in... You've got Mercedes and Vosmic that have cast light to oh, spell. Oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> I misunderstood that. <laughs> We're just waiting around for a random pool of ice just to melt. Hey, I want to see if there's anything in it. Or we wait long enough when we can go fishing, boys. Can we see mm. anything in it? This pool is made out of water. <laughs> you can see a fire on top of it. Yeah, Ooh. but can we see through the ice? That's, well, there's a fire in the way that somewhat obscures your vision. Ah, uh, yes, this I guess it's made of ice. We the rest of it appears to be very frosted. Yeah, we should just go for the door, of your door. See where the last passageway leads, then. 
Yeah, I, I reckon, yeah, might as well keep exploring. Actually, uh, with the camp, or the fire, do they have to stay in close range, or can they just wander off and let it burn? Yeah, in terms of the bonfire, I think it will just continue. Okay, well, so yeah. Create bonfire, 5 I'm just kind of curious. I know you have to be like 50 feet or something to cast it. Yeah, once it's cast, surely you can just leave it, I presume. Yeah, until the spell ends. It lasts only for a minute. So, oh, um, I mean, you well, can that's walk disappointing. away. <laughs> yeah, it's only a minute. Yeah, and you oh. can walk away, but it'll just, you know, it'll just burn for a minute. It's just like RuneScape, it truly is. Oh, Jesus. They burn for like a minute and then go out. <laughs> We're playing RuneScape, boys. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> should, should we keep moving on? Yeah. Yes. Let's not waste our time anymore. As if we've not done that enough already. <laughs> Shut up, you! Right. <laughs> Where would you like to go? Would you like to, to the go? east. East. Okay, yeah, east. going... Going further towards the east, with the bright light guiding you, you come Check to... Check the middle one for a trap, just in case. Okay. I don't middle want two pitfalls. I guess so. Check for it, maybe? Oh, Sorry. use the poker. poker. Actually, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, actually, yeah. Alright, so you go back, uh, you know, who's got the poker now? Or did you uh, I guess poker? I do, since Polycom. I tried smashing ice. Okay, so you're just gonna tap it on the ground ahead of you? Yes. It's pretty heavy. Uh, it takes a, quite a bit of effort to do. But I mean, you couldn't, can couldn't do we so. just use one of our weapons just to tap on the floor? Instead of using the fuse. Um, I got a bow, so I'm using the poker. Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, just look at the floor. I mean, that's... All right. So you exert <laughs> tremendous amount of effort to carry this giant, frozen cold um, rod of metal. Yep. And poking it along, making these clang, clang. Oh, he's doing that. Can Finny just walk up and casually tap it with his cane? Oh, he's trying to get his poker over here. Screw you, Finny. <laughs> large, Don't take this from loud, me. ringing clangs resonating and echoing down the hallways. Of this I'm trying to draw the place. enemies towards us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Little bits of the rock of the floor that have stood for thousands, possibly of years, cracking off to the weight <laughs> of this massive, Good. smashing piston. Desecration. Oh. Metal. Oh, well, fear is doing that. Can I just like, as I'm trying to listen out for the um, what's called the sounds of this floor that I'm tapping, you know, just hearing clang, clang. Can I just look back and be like, fear, I shut the fuck up. I'm trying to listen. <laughs> it does no good. <laughs> the clangs persist. Yeah. To be fair, we could always... say it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could always use the um the handle side of one of our weapons just to. Yeah, you know, just a tap on the ground. I mean, it didn't exactly set. I, mean, I, was, I was already trying with the cane. Hey, I'm okay with this. this. I'm proceeding until I get to the <laughs> intersection. After the intersection, I don't need it anymore. Proceeding until you get to the intersection. Oh, uh, man. It, slightly before you get to that point, um, oh. you can hear um, those that are being especially perceptive can hear a Clang. call and response. <laughs> Can hear a what? So as the clanging echoes out, there is an answer. Oh, <laughs> oh no! You're uh, welcome. Now, uh, what is, now what? And is then it, it goes response? from it goes from clang, 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 clang to clang, clang, thump, clang, thump, thump, clang, thump, thump. So there's this thump that is responding to the clang someplace distantly within this place. Is there a rough want... direction of it, or...? You're not Behind really... Behind. So who wants to start an industrial metal band? <laughs> <laughs> Probably whatever is um, responding to your clangs. Oh, yeah. Wow. I gotta find uh... this person. <laughs> um... And if I hear this, 
Is, is it getting closer at all? I presume it would be. The playing the, sure the, is. The thumps and all that. Uh, the difficulty is is that you can only really hear them when there's <laughs> clangs, and that kind of eliminates the precise hearing required to be able to tell if it's getting closer or not. Just stop the clanging. You can't tell me what to do. Oh. <laughs> clang! <laughs> clang! <laughs> clang! Um, me... Alright, Pierre, Vosmic, that door, close. Close door, close door, close door. I'm I'm gonna try and help with closing that door as well. Like the um the door to the our west now. Vosmic will run back and uh, quickly close the door. Once he's able to get it to move, he's able to slam it shut. But the ring is still turned. It seems like it's likely still unlocked. Shit. Uh, can I try and climb up and try and wedge that back down? Sure. Clang. Clang. <laughs> Uh, jumping atop Vosmic quickly, you're able to clang, thunk, clang, <laughs> grab onto the ring, and just your body weight enough, uh, but just basically just pulling down, doing kind of a pull up on it, you're able to move the ring back in place, uh, sealing the door once again. Clang. clang. Should just left the door open and we set up. Fear is gonna be the death of clang. us. <laughs> Yeah, and we locked ourselves in now too. Yeah, but the the noise was coming from that other side. Yeah, we but we could have. So we just came. Could have done like a surprise. I could have set up bow across from it. Had it really didn't sound like you there. were ready to do that. It sounded like you were just saying, clanging this thing around a lot. If you convinced me, we could have. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't seem like you were. Gonna be convinced of that anytime soon. I just wanted to make sure there's no traps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> there appear to be no traps. <laughs> See? <laughs> this is no. so scuffed. <laughs> this is so unbelievably scuffed. It's Destiny Raid Night all over again. <laughs> Jesus. I just been just playing around the place. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, man. Sure. So, so we, so we have no idea uh, where, you know, this thing making a claim was, and we have no side of a uh, side of it. Or like, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? You get to the other side of it. No. Uh, it. Um. So we still hear the clanging. Then he yep. decided to close the door behind us. Yep. Do we have any way of, uh? And we still have no, we can't see it. No, well, whatever was making the noise is now on the opposite side of that closed door, so. Unless you have x ray vision, I don't think so. Mm. Wait a minute, does Pierre have x ray vision? Uh, only since I could go through between walls is uh, the. Uh, called uh, Divine Sense. Oh, wait, nope, shit, I've already used it. <laughs> well, we will not find out. If something comes bursting through that door, then we will find out what it is. But uh, until then, mayhaps uh, we keep going. Yep. Uh, yeah, I reckon yeah, let's keep going forward. Swiftly, maybe. <laughs> Away from whatever that was. Maybe there's another Yeti. I mean, there was another one unaccounted for, so... Probably. There were two unaccounted for. Are Yetis hard to kill? Probably. Yes. <laughs> That's another statement. Yeah. From experience, yes. We can live in their intestines and be warm. Ah, yes, it's Star Wars. I love it. Oh my! <laughs> oh, I, I was about to say, is that a Star Wars joke? <laughs> this has got to be. <sighs> Alrighty, so yeah, let's keep exploring forward, and maybe we could find. Maybe we'll hear the door mm. open by whatever it decided to. Respond. Unfortunately, there's not really a lot of forward. Out of curiosity, if we're not bringing this poker any like way forward, could we try and wedge it so it's like leaned up against the door and like wedged into a crack in the stone or something like that, maybe? Or plan here. Of course. Just just to barricade the door so nothing comes through. But 
Well, where are we leaving out of? <laughs> We're going east further. I want to try and barricade the door to the west of the room with the weird pool in it. Wait, now I'm confused. Yeah. Are we stuck in the room with the pool in it? Yeah, I want to try and barricade that from our side, so whatever was making that giant thumping noise either has to go through the door that is now barricaded, or go past the spike fall trap. Either way, it's not getting to us easily. Okay, so we are currently in the pool room. I thought we were in the in the section of... Uh, yeah, I thought we were too. I thought we were you're like in... all split up between those two rooms. Like yeah, you're, you're in that area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so... Wait, I, um, I was gonna say, I just realized the door that Finney did close we could technically get that iron poker and wedge it into the door. That is literally Correct. what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> that is just what he said. Sorry, it, it sounded like more you were like putting it sideways and just... No, 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 no. I want to like wedge it so like one end of it's like wedged into like one of the benches or into a like crack in the stone or something. It wouldn't be, and... it wouldn't be the benches. The best way to do it would be to put the pointy end into an intersection of the rocks mm, underneath. Yeah and then put the handle end of it against the door, so that way, when they push against it, you'll have to be fighting uh, the, the handle. You yeah, can even, no, if yeah. you wanted, chip in, you know, take an axe or a blade of some kind and make a notch in the door so that the handle of this pokey thing, the large uh, metal poker, can really set into the door. That way, they to force it open, they'll have to be damaging the door or damaging the poker. I mean, if we, if we really wanted to, I could probably cast a row of frost on the handle and maybe get that to freeze. Uh, that, that I mean, but we still want something to at least something we could fix it ourselves if we ever need to get. Yeah, if, if we need to come back, yeah. We could always no, just heat it on. up again. You lock yourself <laughs> in. It'll be fine. <laughs> so, sure, sure. Good. I have a suggestion. If we want to go to the south side, we could then use sound, try and lure whatever it is to the pitfall trap. We have light cast on Harrow's uh, shield, so um, blinding anyone who comes around the corner. If they can't see the trap, they fall in. Um, okay, RC, have we heard anything since the clanging stopped? Nope. Uh, answers that question, and um. I say we just keep an uh, ear out, like, you know, it's either gonna have to come past the spike fall trap or make a lot of noise trying to open that door, especially if we wedge it with the poker. Yeah, I have reckon so as well. So, I say we don't waste too much time, you know, just just keep exploring for now and just keep an ear out in case, you know, exploring something what? happens. <laughs> uh, further east. How? There is a door. There is another pathway there. Yeah, I say keep going east. Yep. Yeah. Let's uh, try to open up that. We have to. Un can we? Can we try and barricade this door first, sir? No, uh, we barricaded the west door. Yeah, we're we're barricading the door oh, no, no, no. to the west of the frozen pool room. Okay. This whole time I thought it was the east one. I'm like, <laughs> no, no. How are we going forward? We're literally stuck. <laughs> yes, yeah, so let's barricade the door we're going through. Yes. Do you want me to cast yeah. frost on the door handle? No. Nope. No. 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 no, no. Oh, thanks. Um, okay. yeah, if, if we can, we'll try and barricade the door to poker, even try and, you know, wedge it into, like, the door itself a bit as well, like you mentioned. Yeah, I'm rid of my so. instruments, I see. And then, yeah, if we can do that, we'll keep moving forward afterwards. I reckon. Alright. Yeah, you can uh, pretty easily wedge this in there. It's got a big pointy end that's able to get into the very small cracks on the floor, and you're able to kind of push it into the wood a little bit, make sure that it's in a decent place, and in fact take out a, a bit of a hand axe or something to create a notch to really put the poker in. So this is pretty securely barricaded. Anything that's pushing on it really hard will have to either damage the door or damage the poker, basically. Mm. Mm -hmm. Alright, well I guess keep going east for now and see what's up over there. Okay. You've come to a door. Um, from even approaching towards the intersection, even as the clanging was still continuing, you could see ahead another door on the other side of this intersection. And this intersection does indeed go towards the pit trap. 
There seems to be nothing else of interest within this hallway. Question. Except in this intersection, can I roll perception check to try and find my ball bearing? Yes. <laughs> it was for of it. I want my ball bearing back. Okay, go ahead and roll the perception check. That is a 15. Yeah. You've that found it! Oh wait, no, there's a little rock. It's about the size of it. Oh, maybe this is... Nope, it's another little piece of plastic. This... <sighs> Do you have a magnet by chance? Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, some sort of loading stone? Yeah, I've... That's black magic. <laughs> You know roughly where it went, and there's just so many little tiny things. Oh, there it is. Got it. Yep, yep, you got it. Yay. Just all Bull. kinds of little chunks of yeah, stuff. Bobangs, back up to 995. Oh, Hell yeah. Yep. Finney's not losing today. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't want to waste the tenth of a copper. <laughs> See, now you're getting it. See, all Finny cares about is money. Oh, I'm just playing to my character. I think it's 200 for a copper. Wow. That's actually pretty cheap. Anyway. That's money saved right there. So what do you guys want to do? Uh, okay, so the door is still... Uh, so Finny... Yeah, it's still closed. So, let's... Uh, Let's uh, get uh, Finny up on Bosnick's shoulders and see if we can try to get the door open. Yep, I'm fine with that. Pull up and uh, try and turn the handle. It turns easily, like most of the others have, and now it's a pull. Do you want to use the rope, or do you want to use the pokey thing? You can use the pokey thing. You could also, you know, what do you want to do to open this. Do we want to use Finny again? <laughs> I'll hold on to it, you pull Finny. <laughs> you could, yeah. So, you hold on to the ring and Bosmic will pull you. Oh, <laughs> in some cases, it... this would be a torture. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, but in this particular instance, uh, the door simply opens. Perfect. Inside, revealing a room on the other end. And to, to clarify again, I looked it up. Yeah, one ball bearing is one tenth of a copper. So. Hell yeah, money right. saved. Yep, every little bit counts. You're yep. Almost, slightly more than half of a copper. <laughs> on the other side is a sort of a a long left and right room covered in racks, different kind of racks, um, and in fact, I can just reveal the whole image now, because you guys have found everything that is on this map. Yeah. No one's hanging from a rack, are they? Hmm? <laughs> so no one's hanging from a rack, are they? No. So these racks that extend left and right in this room and kind of circle around it and are in the middle. Uh, you can very quickly recognize while each of these items is certainly different than everything that you have seen, you recognize their sort of intent, their proportion, their size. This is an armory. Ooh, is there anything left racks, in it? Or... Yes. These racks are covered in weaponry. Fancy. Uh, are they erupted? <laughs> No. Uh, well, maybe. It's tough to tell. They don't look like steel. Uh, they appear to be... Uh, many of them are some sort of a bluish-green metal of some kind. Um, is this the same sort of bluish as the dagger I found earlier? Yes. And uh, would this be the same bluish that we found in the Crucible? Wasn't that more of a gold? Inside the Crucible was actually golden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But looking at all of this, it's all, it, it's the same sort of proportion that had been found in basically everything else, in that it is, you've got daggers that are like hand and a half short swords to your sizes, you've got these very long spears. You've got uh, stabs that are potentially 
usable as bows and coiled spring or coiled strings of uh, some sort of a black uh, string. You've got bolts, but you don't see crossbows. But you do see large arrows with strangely decorative points on them. Although the fletching is either lost or never existed. Uh, but the yeah, bolt, the, the bolts look like they'd fit in my crossbow at all. No. No. Okay. Well. The bolt looks like uh, it looks like it belongs. Like I don't want to go so far as to say um, siege equipment size, but <laughs> siege equipment size. Like it's it's clearly a bolt in proportion and the way that it is kind of put together, mm. but this thing would be considered like artillery to your proportions. Well, <laughs> not so using them, man. These arrows. Um, how many? There are dozens, dozens of these arrows, and these uh, arrows themselves are probably eh, four feet long, three to four feet long. You could potentially use one as a short spear. The same with the bolts. Hmm. Hmm. No, even know if it's worth the javelin, actually. Hmm, actually, it is very common. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yes, you could technically use Actually, yeah. I mean... the bolts the bolts could be used as decent javelins and the arrows as sort of short spears because they're so, they're all so big. Uh, but uh, as I said, there are things that certainly they're the portion of knives, but they're so large that they could be used as swords. Uh, and there are also clubs, big, uh, shapely bats of timber that are just massive. So uh, is it like some giant rice type armory? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, you've seen a statue of these people. You've passed it before. They have the sort of proportions of dwarves, and they look like dwarves, and they're sort of dwarvish-esque writing around, but they're gigantic in size. So, I mean, basically, it's like a a race of giant dwarves. What's the term for that again? Um, like jumbo term. I don't know if there is a term for it. Or you mean oxymoron? Yes, there you go. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Giant dwarves. <laughs> Giant dwarves, yeah. Anyway. So you have found this. What would you all like to do? Uh, I'm good. I mean, I'm presuming none of this is really useful, especially to me. I can really use most of this. You could use a spear, you could use a sword. I mean, it depends on what you want. Uh, I, I thought all this was like big stuff, so. Yeah, well, but... it's big, but there are, like I said, there are things that would be daggers to them, or swords to you. You could mm. use it as a sword. Uh, there are things that are look like arrows, but could be used as spears, to, could be used as javelins. There's things that could be used. There are their proportion swords that are completely unusable. There are axes that are massive. <laughs> if they were implemented, they could be used to cut down uh, many foes at once, but they're, you know, good luck hauling them. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely massive. But, I'll take a dagger. Uh, so basically, what could be akin to a short sword? In this sense, exactly. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab one of those as well if there's any left over. You're surprised at how light weight it is, considering its size. You would expect it to be much heavier, but it's not. And so, for its size, it's also quite versatile. And because of its proportion, although most sword swords are made with only like one hand in use, this seems to be a short sword that can handle a hand and a half to two handed. So, while most short swords are wielded with one hand and do 1d6 damage, 
This is a versatile short sword that can be wielded with two hands to do 1d8 damage. Hmm. So you hmm. have the option of doing 1d6 if you're holding it with one hand, if you need your other hand free, or you can wield it with two hands and you can do 1d8 damage. Uh, what type of weapon is it considered? Um, a short simple sword. martial. As that would be simple. Simple. I believe. Yeah, short swords. Uh, let's see. Right. Five. I'm pretty sure swords are simple. Weapons. As long as it's not exotic, I can use it. Fine. Would it just be a regular short sword or a fancy thing? Or... It's a fancy thing. Yeah. Is it actually no? Short swords are when the halfling's using it. Uh, short swords are martial, actually. So, yeah, that's still good with me. Yeah, okay. yeah, as long as you can use martial, that's fine. Yeah. But it's a short sword that is con still considered finesse and light, although it is much more lightweight than the others. While a normal short sword is two pounds, this is only one pound. Hmm. Okay. And it also has the uh, versatile feature, which means that if you use two hands on it, then it bumps up the damage dice. So you, it can be used as a finesse weapon, you said? Yes, it is a finesse yeah. weapon. Yeah, yeah, it is a finesse weapon. It has the light property, so it can be thrown as well. And it weighs one pound instead of two. And it is versatile, meaning, again, you could use it with one hand, like a normal short sword, mm -hmm. and do one C D6 damage. Or you can use it with two hands and do 1d8. I just gotta remember how to add items on this site. Uh, I've, I've added it to my inventory, but I'm not quite sure how to add it as a versatile thing. Having mm. both things. I mean, I can, yeah. I can just write it in the description of the weapon. Yeah, you can just kind of write it into the description yeah, of it. I, I, don't, will... you know, I don't know how to make custom items or anything on there. Um, but this is... I don't know if there's any if it's there's an equal to this item. It's just something I thought was cool. So mm, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't find anything, but I'll just yeah, like I said, I'll just edit the short sword to be like that. Yeah, I can do okay. that. It's all good. Just gotta remember how the fuck to do that. <laughs> uh you manage equipment, you find short sword, add it, and then I believe damage bonus yeah it, well it's mm. uh it's a way to actually edit, um, like, rename things, redo things. Oh, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah. We can yep. keep, we'll keep going for now. I'll figure it out as we go. So I, I literally did it, like, a few weeks ago. I renamed my, uh, cane sword and rapier to different things. Cool. Unless, cool. No, maybe uh, I added them as just custom items. Maybe I'll just do that. And uh, there's no equivalent of uh, like a mace for these kind of short swords. They're all pretty much uh, stabbing weapons, aren't they? The if, well, there are there are maces and there are uh, like hammers and there are a couple of those other things. The issue is, is those are all to proportion of these giant creatures. The mace that is here, it's like a wrecking ball. <laughs> it is. It is so massive, you, it, it would be beyond unwieldy <laughs> to uh, But um, there's nothing in terms of a small mace. But this appears to be like a dagger that they were able to kind of utilize. Can I uh, pick up a dagger too or not? There were, I mean, there's quite a few of them. Daggers are pretty common sidearms and utilities, so they were, there were a lot of daggers. Uh, there's enough daggers there for everybody. So what, uh, Which, what again, was the uh, what was the word he used to describe uh, the fact that it could be one-handed or two-handed? Versatile. Versatile. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Uh, um... So to give a comparison of kind of what I'm thinking, put it in useful images. It's something kind of like. Kind of like a blend between these two, uh, pretty close to the bottom one, really, in terms of the kind of shape, but more of like the, the color of the one on top. And the proportion-wise, 
this is uh, it's even larger. Imagine that it's like a enough room in the handle for imagine it's like one and a half times the size of what it's shown by scale of the hand. So that it's enough that you could actually get two hands on the grip, really. Which That's is cool. almost like a size of a long sword for Fenny. Mm. Hmm. Alright, well, I've added that as a blue metal short sword. With a, so there's a uh, short sword, is it? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Just drive a knife right into my artful description. <laughs> <laughs> do, uh... Rangers typically do wheel nuts? Doesn't matter what's typical. I don't, just don't know if I should grab two or not. That's, all. That's up to you. No, doesn't I mean, matter. doesn't matter what's typical. Yeah, because proficiency for me would be to, or typically, not typically, um, what I would prefer to use is bow. So this would be last resort. So it might not matter. Out of curiosity, does it look like these like are worth anything at all, or they just look like no. common regular swords? I mean, they don't seem to be common regular at all. This definitely seems to be different mm. in terms of the, in terms of what it is, in terms of its shape, and it certainly isn't a normal metal. It might be worth nothing, or to the right person, it might be incredibly valuable. This is potentially some sort of a lost legendary civilization, and you have found their armory. Imagine you found a, a Viking armory, or imagine you found a like pre-Roman Greek armory complete with all of these weapons. Mm. Potentially millions of dollars per. Uh, I suggest to... perhaps we stock up on a few things there. See if we can possibly sell at some point. Um, well, I mean, even if we find a way out, we could possibly always come back or, or make a, a loot run. If you recall, your deals with the Adventurer's Guild say that you can have whatever you find, that's fine. No big deal. Uh, and in fact, I believe you negotiated such that because you're doing the job for them and they're not paying you very much, they won't even take a cut of what you find as adventurers. Similarly, yeah. Perry said that he'll pay you very little, but almost certainly he would be allowed, you know, he would be open to the idea of like, oh, we're just going to take this. You think you can probably talk him into it. <laughs> hmm. uh, but um, for everyone else, for uh, Mercedes and Fiera that are, are Fira that are not part of the Adventurers Guild, uh, it depends on whichever you get out of it. But that's basically kind of the standing for everyone else is that if you get this out of here and you can find a buyer for it, this stuff might be valuable. Yeah, I'd suggest maybe grab some of the lighter stuff that we can carry and go from there. So in terms of the lighter stuff that you can carry, we're, are you going to be packing your arms full of essentially spears and swords? The lightness isn't too much of an issue. This stuff, as I said, is surprisingly light, but it's big. Mm. Is the uh, the metal the thing that's of value? I don't know. Because we light. could just take off the um, tips of the arrows and stuff. That's true. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, yeah. The the arrows are they just like wood shafts? I'm presuming. With yes. like nothing fletching, so yeah. And but it also it's possible too that to a collector, like, hey, this was a whole arrow, but I ripped it apart. <laughs> yeah, pet <Pepe. laughs> <laughs> Is that the shaft alone and the way that it's attached and all the holdings of it and it being complete, it might be the greatest value. But if you tear the heads off and you have some metal, yeah, that's something. But you don't know if this metal is worth anything. You don't even know what this metal is and the hmm. value of the whole thing might be more important or we find a dorvern dorvern blacksmith and sell them some metal 
we'd probably get more money off of a collector Aww. if it's worth anything at all. For all you know, this metal is worthless, but the fact that it is from here gives it value. Mm. Yeah, I mean... You don't know what this metal's worth. I mean, yeah. You, don't, you can't even identify it. I mean, I, I say we all grab some stuff. Um, not a ridiculous amount of stuff, but, you know... Enough, I can grab uh, one more, uh, just grab one more dagger, basically. Sure. Yeah, it looks like there's 12 daggers. Yeah, I'll just grab an extra one then. <laughs> Alright. So how are you storing it? Like, just shoving it in your belt, or...? I'm going... So... I did have a hand axe I'm going to get rid of. Um... And then another one. But one will be equipped, uh, so that might probably go where the hand axe is. Are there any, like, sheaths or anything along with these, or is it just the weapons on racks? Hmm. There likely were sheaths, but for whatever reason, the uh, leather that it has been built upon has not survived, really. You can hmm. see buckles that likely were on belts and you can see uh, various kind of snaps and things um, things that would be accompanying with some of these things but for whatever reason the leather just has not survived that's fair enough I mean probably it wasn't um yeah I mean no matter what anything stored for a long time would just about to decay so mm. Actually, then again, the timber bin, so... Ooh, that could be some probably some, some of the good timber. The doors did not, yeah, but there were several wooden crates and barrels that did not survive that you had found. Hmm. And can potentially I... furniture for all you know. Yeah, can I, um, store one inside my bedroll, like, roll it up? Kind of, yeah, potentially. I mean, it's pretty big. It's like over two feet long. It's uh, like three quarters of a meter. Well, it would be sticking out on both yeah. ends. Yeah, it would just be sticking out. But yeah, it, it's big. I mean, it's just, it's imagine again, like imagine a sword. It's a sword. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think I'm just. I don't want to put it in my pack because then it's going to put a hole. Through. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Actually, then again, the size of a regular backpack, would it be able to fit a sword, or would it like be jutting at, at the top? Though? It would be that jutting thing. out. Yeah. I mean, if you put it in a handle first, I suppose. <laughs> okay, we'll just have the sword side, sharp side sticking up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Easy habit. laughs> I mean, at least you won't get a hole in your bag. You know, silver linings. Ugh. <laughs> Might lose an ear or two, but you know. I mean, as it bounces around. And I'm guessing the bags wouldn't have any kind of external, yeah, like pieces of uh, leather to, you know, like normally strap on. Hmm. Actually, mm, I mean, there are straps for holding things onto it, but it's they're not exactly made to hold. Is there any yeah. way? Is there any way I could use the rope that we have to make like a makeshift, like? The holster or something for it. Something to, like, hold it off of a backpack or something. Ooh. Perhaps. Uh, I mean, sort of, yeah. You can just tie them and bundle, put them into a bundle and then put the bundle on the bag. Yeah, there's something. <laughs> it just falls back and just gets to be able to buy a bag. <laughs> Sorry, I just meant that. <laughs> Pierre falls into another pitfall trap, and then also falls on, like, 50 swords. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, that's it. Oh. Pierre that takes awesome. the equivalent of 50 d6 damage. <laughs> so awesome. each sword impales him. <laughs> uh, I mean, we could do something like that. Um, this possibility could do, like... I don't know, something else. I honestly reckon let's keep them all into a good pile and maybe we could bundle them up 
and when we had time, or once we found an exit, we can come back, grab them, and hold. Who knows we're coming back this way, though? I'm keeping one in my backpack. Uh, bed roll. No. Yeah, I, I, I'm definitely gonna keep one myself as well, but... Mm. Just in case we lose all of them at once. For whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, okay. I, I just, I just picture it's like, you know, we decide to leave them here and then come back from later. We go through some way that then gets blocked off. We then don't get the swords again. Like... Yeah. But to be fair, I mean, as long as we can find a way out, there's always a way back in. True, true. Do you really feel like climbing the mountain again just to get a couple of swords there? Climb the mountain, climb down my rope. I'm yeah, that's sword. a long way to go back. Yeah. Depends on how beautiful the swords are. Well, I mean, we can always get it tested um, once we get back to a proper... Yeah, is the climb worth a thousand gold, maybe? <laughs> well, uh, when you're penniless. If any, it is. Actually, then, mm -hmm. again, then again, you could technically just tow the town and get a cut off them. Oh, that's so you, I, I doubt. Perry if would be solve, going up here. If we solve the <laughs> gold issue, then it would be much easier. That's true. Okay. I mean, group call, which... group call, I suppose, but it's like, I don't see any good to leaving them here. You know, we either have to trek back a long way when we do find an exit, or we get blocked off and then have to go the entire way around again. Either way, it's time lost. Actually, yeah. then again, we could bundle it up you know, and have it attached by a rope and then drag it along with us. And then completely it... destroy them, yes. Brilliant. A collector would love that. I'm not entirely greedy, so I'm just taking one and that's all I'm concerned with. Finny get... is... Finny wants money. <laughs> why, why, can't, why can't we just get Vosmik to carry them all? He's big. Vosmik, buddy? What yeah, else? Vosmik will carry <laughs> When you bundle them all up, it only... Weighs like ten or fifteen pounds. It's no big deal. Oh, just that's have really light on them. Yeah, just put on this back, and if he needs to, yeah. have some on the front. So I hope he can just be carrying stuff. Fuck, if it's that light, can we bundle anything else up as well then? Yeah. I was expecting it to be so much heavier than that. Like. No, no. Well, because again, you're going after the ones <laughs> that are not that big. Yeah. So, yeah. like the. The arrows, they weigh about two pounds each. Uh, about a pound and a half to two pounds. Or they basically, they're somewhere in the neighborhood of a little bit under a kilo. And mm. they are big, yeah. But you could put ten of them together. It's no big deal. You know, there, there's, and there's dozens of those. I mean, you've got options. There's a lot of things that you could use. A lot of things that you could take if you wanted them. I feel also, if they are valuable and we sell them as, like, you know, to a collector or something like that, like, more variants of different things would sell for a higher price as well. Like, you know, here's 50 daggers, or here's some daggers, here's some arrows, here's some bolts, here's, like, a whole wide collection. Like, wider collection would go for more, I feel. Depends on what people want. Also, speaking of, you know, pop vinyl collecting or Yu-Gi-Oh card collecting shit like that oh people boy. people pay for full <laughs> sets I, that's all I'm going into it. I'm just saying people pay for full sets yeah well if you sell them individually sometimes you could make more money sometimes you should <laughs> well, I, say, I say we hey, try uh, and bundle up you know a couple of different types of items you know anything we can actually bundle up easy and carry with us Alright. I would I offer to, uh, but they are as I, big as me, so... I still say make Boz make a pair of horse. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pierre could probably carry some stuff too. I mean, I could carry as well, but yeah, as soon as we become somebody becomes a pack mule, then the kind of issue is that, uh... Yeah, that's, that's, why, that's why I'm thinking a couple of small bundles split up between different people. I would offer, but it's like, the arrows are literally taller than me, so... I can't do those at least. Like, I could probably maybe do something else, but not the arrows. So. 
<laughs> but Walter would be happy to carry whatever he wanted to carry. <laughs> Yeah, that was I'm, <laughs> sorry, I'm picturing uh, Lydia or whatever her name is from Skyrim. I'm sworn to carry your burdens. That <laughs> 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 is just for me right now. Yeah, do we own a um, couple of different bundles split between a couple of different people? Maybe? You just we don't force Vosmic to carry literally everything. <laughs> he could carry. Uh, well, depending on what you bundle up, but he could carry quite a lot of it. He is strong. Sure, sure. Sure. Now, I will add as well, Mercedes, what uh -huh. uh, what cantrips do you have? There are certain cantrips the wizards have. There are rituals that wizards have that can aid in this. You could have a floating disc that can hold up to like 500 pounds of stuff. Oh, that actually would be great. Great bonfire light and two ray frosts for some reason. Two ray frosts. Dual wielding. You can take that down a little bit. <laughs> the, the ray of frost, but let's see here. You might not be high enough to be able to do it, but at level one, uh, at level one, you for, for your first level spells, you could have something called unseen servant. Unseen Servant is just that. It's an invisible uh, imaginary entity, essentially, that you have that can... Oh, okay, come on. It, it, it can carry up to 30 pounds, uh -huh. and it can just follow you around, and you can have it for an hour, if that's one of the spells that you have. It'll just be there. It's only an It'll hour, be though. there. Can hmm? I keep recasting that? After yeah, hour? You can, it takes you... You can use it as a ritual... It takes you 10 minutes to cast it, and it will oh. just follow you for an hour. Uh, that could, that could were, be worth it. Yeah, can I actually get that? Were, hmm? Because I've, I've still got a slot open to learn that. If you've, that's a level 1 spell, so if you've got room for a level 1 spell, I not a cantrip, room. but a level 1 spell, then you could have Unseen Servant. The question, ritual casting, that's, you know, it takes longer to do, but it doesn't use up the spell yeah. slot, right? Correct. Right, I thought you so. can also yeah. have at level one the floating disc spell. This spell creates a circular, horizontal plane of force, three feet in diameter and one inch thick, that floats three feet above the ground in an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see within range. The disc remains for the duration, which is one hour, and can hold up to 500 pounds. The disc is immobile. While you are within 20 feet of it, if you move more than 20 feet away from it, the disc follows you so that it remains within 20 feet of you. It can move across uneven terrain, up to six stairs, slopes, and the like, but it can't cross an elevation change of 10 feet or more. Uh, for example, it can't move across a 10-foot deep pit, um, could it, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, and if you move more than 100 feet away from the disc, then the spell ends. So you could have the Unseen Servant is useful because in addition to carrying up to 30 pounds of stuff, it can't attack, but you could have it later, like, do your laundry. Or, <laughs> like, literally on the list of things that it can say, it says um, you can mentally command the Servant to move up to 15 feet and interact with an object. Can form uh, The Servant can perform simple tasks that a human Servant can do, such as fetching things. Cleaning, mending, holding uh, clothes, I guess that could be used for many circumstances. Serving food, pouring. Yeah. Alright, all right, you can mix <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say that, one, that one's probably easier because it's like, sure, the disc could carry a lot, but it's such a small area that fitting well, a lot of things on it would be difficult. Yeah. The disc, well, it's it's three feet. I mean, it's, it's, it's essentially like a meter across. It's not. You could pile all the stuff on top of it. it would, hmm. You could bundle it and pile it, and it would hold everything. It would potentially hold, not the racks, but potentially hold virtually everything in this entire room. And in fact, the disc is strong enough, you could almost certainly put the metal that was uh, back in the crucible room on here, and you could take that too. But of course, it would only be able to go horizontal. You wouldn't necessarily be able to get out with it. Hmm. But with an unseen servant, it does all kinds of other different it's just different sort of styles. Yeah. But those are yeah. 
two first level rituals that you could that Mercedes could potentially have. I'm just throwing them out there in case you guys are. Can I keep recasting them if they're ritual? Yeah, it takes you oh, ten okay. minutes to cast the ritual. Okay, but that's what it means by ritual. Okay. Yeah. So ritual is essentially there are some spells that are rituals, and they're usually the utility spells, and they're such that if you cast it through a ritual, then it's fine. It doesn't use a spell slot. If you don't cast it as a ritual and you use a spell slot, then it's just one action like any other spell. This takes six seconds, and uh, but that uses your spell slots, of which you only have like two or three. So as a ritual, it takes 10 minutes to cast it, but you can cast it over and over and over and over. Yeah, useful outside of combat, completely useless in combat. Yeah, fun fact as well, Unseen Servant. It does not go away. It, it ends after one hour, but it does not go away if you instantiate another Unseen Servant. Technically speaking, hmm. even just using the rituals, you could have five of these guys going at one time. So if you like had to like, oh no, we had a really terrible party, and you know, mom and dad are going to be home in uh, eight hours, but we got to clean this whole place up. What are we going to do? Ah, I'm going to get some unsweet service. So, right. <laughs> so you could just keep doing the ritual over and over and over for two or three hours. And the entire time you're doing it, you've got a whole bunch of these invisible dudes just fixing stuff. Hmm. Uh-huh. But in defense well, of... By the time you get... cast the sixth one, the first one would go, though. If they only yeah, like now. Ritual, you can have as many as five going. Hmm. So you just keep doing the ritual, but every time you finish the ritual, another one goes away. But you can have up to four or five of these guys huh. working the entire time to do whatever you want. That's just a hmm. fun thing that you can do with magic. Yeah, just think of floating disc as this. Just the, all the bodies you could carry on top of it. That's true. <laughs> a lot of bodies. Mm-hmm. You can actually get the floating disc. Bodies it could be maybe even two or three of them. A lot of bodies conveniently burnt by bonfires. Mm. 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 A little too fun. <laughs> well, if you use the bonfire right, then you can easily carry the bodies. The unseen servant <laughs> is carrying the bodies after the bonfire. Mm. Alright, so you think I should get the, uh, thing with you? Yeah, I'm seeing 7, I reckon it's a lot better. No, I already got that one, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, the Floating Disc and Unseen Servant both have a lot of utility. Yeah. Most of the time, you don't need both. But there's a lot yeah. of things that you can do with Floating Disc. Like, uh, it wouldn't really help you with the Pit Trap, but there's things that you can use it to circumvent traps and all kinds of things. I mean, there's a lot of things that can be done. Okay, I've got the Unseen Servant for the moment. If I need it, I can get the Floating Disc. Alright, one of these days we're going to solidify that spell list. (laughs) For now, yeah. Oh, you can learn them all? Uh, How many Mm -hmm. can you have it? How many can you learn? Because it says I can still learn a few. Yeah, there's. In terms of spells that you can learn, I think you can learn up to eight right now. I forget. I'll have to look at it again, and I suggest you look at it as well. But there is a limit to how many you can learn. And there yeah. are, like, you can change out certain spells. You can learn more spells as you level. Yeah. But at, at some point, um, we're, <laughs> we're going to say, uh, yeah, if you don't know it, then you don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But right now, you've always had uh, the uh, uh, serpent. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So that is one possibility of, you know, who can carry these things. You could either use a spell slot or do the ritual and then have the servant carry them for, you know, up to an hour. Well, I guess I'll go with the servant way. I will cast, uh, I will not cast, I'll do the ritual for unseen servant and uh, carry a bunch of stuff. How's it sound, Scott? Right. Yeah, and you guys good. probably spend some time bundling up various things for the next 10 minutes or so while he does the ritual. And yeah. soon enough, how many of things do you acquire? Um, I'm uh, thinking maybe... Dozens of the uh, arrows. There are some of the swords and axes, but they are very heavy. 
So I'd say maybe a bundle, a bundle of the sword or the daggers rather, um, bundle of arrows and then bundle of bolts perhaps. Okay, so the the easier the to carry stuff. In the daggers, there were twelve. You want to take them all? I think two. So. Yeah, so there are ten remaining, and then nine if any took another and whoever else. But there were twelve there. Yeah. Yeah. How many you take them all? Suppose so. Yeah. Yep. How many are in the bundle then? Um. Uh, so well, how many do we have? I've personally got one. I personally got one. I have two. So that's okay, four. Okay, so there were eight left. Eight left. Oh, I took I took a, a dagger too. Or Seven left. Sword, yeah. Seven left. Seven left. Now, as a wizard, are, are you able to use that? It counts as a, a martial it, weapon. I thought it was just a dagger. No, no it's um, a sword. It is. It, a yeah, it's technically a sword. I keep, I keep saying dagger, but it's really a sword. You have to look into your proficiencies bottom left corner into the weapons section, and it says what type of weapons you can use. It's a gigantic dagger that technically counts as a short sword. It's a dagger for big things. Yeah, but you see, you could use one hand. Yeah. Oh, actually, um, it's a martial weapon. It's still a martial weapon. Yeah, um, quick question, um, it says, in the bottom left corner, your proficiencies in languages, in your weapons thing, does it say specifically martial weapons, finesse weapons, it's or long up. swords? Oh, uh, wait, you're a high elf. Short swords. You're a high elf. Yeah, it says long sword, dagger, yeah. okay, short bow, short yeah. sword, sling, and longbow. As a, an, an elf. Elves get weapon training, and so elves have proficiency with weapons, uh, even if the class does not. So as a wizard, you would usually not be able to do that. But as an elf, uh, let's see, dark vision, trance, no, no, no. Um, okay, I don't see it here. But you do get weapon training, so can, you should can, be able to. I can, I can even use a longsword too. Yeah, yeah. If, it, if it says it can use it, then... Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can use it. Can use it. Yeah, because they get the all elves are given uh, weapon training when they're young. Oh, neat. Did not know that, but there we go. You know, <laughs> learning things even after watching yeah. thousands of hours of D and D streams. Oh High elf have nice. elf weapon training. You have proficiency in long short sword sword, uh, short sword, short bow, and long bow. They, uh, high elves, because that was the part where it's just like, oh, that's right, Mercedes is a high elf. They have weapon training. <laughs> so, yeah, you can use this weapon. He's going to straight up Gandalf. <laughs> yeah. If you, were any, if you were any other type of elf, you would not be able to. <laughs> <laughs> or any other type of race, for the most part. Uh, so, you had seven that you could bundle. Uh, and in fact, we'll make it six. Bosmic will take one as well. <laughs> uh, so Very you easy. have six that mm -hmm. you can bundle. So that's six pounds. We're going to disregard the, the rope Is weight. Is Alucard not one one? Right now. Uh, uh, Alucard definitely... Well, Alucard is a sorcerer, yes? Yeah. He might not so is a human. Yeah. As a sorcerer... Uh, wait, He'll uh, take one because it's just worth it, but he is actually unable to use it. But he'll take one just because everyone else is taking one. <laughs> okay, so we're down to six then in the bundle. You know, so there are five in the bundle. Oh, five, sorry, my bad. I miscounted. Yeah, so there were 12, and then uh, yeah. 10 yeah. after Furia, 9, Benny, 8, Mercedes, 7, Piero, 6, Alucard, 5, Bosman. Yeah. So there are five yeah. in the bundle. So the bundle so far is a little over five pounds. And you want to take arrows as well. The arrows themselves yeah. are uh, fairly heavy. How many do you want to take of the arrows? There are dozens here. So. Uh, how much should I weigh? Roughly. They weigh. Uh, it's somewhere in the. They're under a kilo, so somewhere in the neighborhood of. Uh, about a pound and a half, let's say. Uh, so maybe... 
And actually, and the bolts as well. They ran the same weight, they lighter. The yeah. bolts are about in the same way. Okay. Yeah, um, so if you can, if you consider the unseen servant can carry up about 30 pounds, mm. and about five of that's used up, so you can have about 25 pounds of goods. Each of these things are about a pound and a half. Do I do maybe 10 arrows, 10 bolts on the unseen servant? Someone carries swords, and then we have a separate bundle of arrows and bolts for someone else to carry. Yeah, I mean, I can always carry a bolt unbundled to prepare if anything happens. I'm going to immediately. Yeah, I mean, the unseen servant right now could carry 15 arrows or bolts. Yeah. And then with the swords and the arrows and bolts, you'd be top down. Yeah, um, to 10 arrows, 10 bolts would be 30, so that would probably be his limit then. Um, if we went, like, say, I don't know, uh, Vosmic or Zan, you know, Piero, anyone to carry the sword, someone else carry some arrows, someone else carry bolts. I could probably carry some bolts if they're not too huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're uh, kind of here. They're about as tall as you. Ah, okay, well, <laughs> that's not happening then. Um, I mean, makes sense for Finny. The swords would probably be the lightest bundle at the moment. I could carry the swords, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll carry them. I'll attempt at carrying them. I'll carry the bolts. What do you want the Unseen Servant to carry? Uh, we'll do the 10 arrows, 10 bolts, or we could just do like 20 arrows or something on the Unseen Servant. Okay. So which do you want? <laughs> you're gonna have to re you're gonna have to record on your own what you take. I just want to make sure yeah. that the unseen can carry it. Do we want what? Ten of each, twenty of one. Uh, I say ten of each. Ten of each, right? Because that would be fifteen pounds each then. All right. And he's just just holding these things. They're not really rope bundled per se. He's just. He's do just we, holding do them. Do we not want to bundle them up quickly? I, I thought we were bundling them up while Mercedes was uh, ritual casting. So. Yes, but it's a question of how many. So I left about a pound and a half of weight. If he takes. Because uh, I was calculating because the rope is not weightless either. Fair point. So, yeah, fair point. Depending on how it goes, uh, you, basically you could take maybe uh, 19 of the arrows then and then have some for rope uh, yeah yeah do or that he'll too. carry the 20 arrows that's doable but it, it's just, he's just carrying them he's basically hmm. again he's invisible but i'm picturing just this little dude with his arms out and you're just stacking them on like firewood <laughs> and he doesn't care like as long yeah, as it's if he, it if he drops them or just you know vanishes all of a sudden they're going everywhere so well, no, yeah. they're just going to fall down. <laughs> and depending on where he's standing in time, they could go everywhere. Yeah, fair enough. You just got to keep mindful of that. But yeah, so. you could bundle them up, but that'll cost you basically like the weight of one. Not the full weight, but, you know, there's got to be yeah. a buffer there. Yeah, I'd say 19 is fine then. Okay. Like 10 so. arrows, 9 bolts, I guess. Alright, you have 10 arrows and 9 bolts on All right. the unseen. And then I'll and carry the bundle of five swords, I guess. Then you've got five swords. Yeah, I'll mark okay. that down now. Now there are, of course, some uh, large axes and maces and swords that themselves weigh a substantial amount um, and also are very bulky in size. Like, they're like statues kind of size. They're yeah. just massive but functional swords of roughly the same metal uh, so if you guys want to take those you can uh, you could also take the stabs that likely are for uh, bows there's also the bow strings the black bow strings oh uh, yeah actually um, I mean could we technically use the black bow string to help um, just tie the stuff up yeah 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 it's absolutely Saved ourselves from using the work, or it, yeah, it seems you're not quite sure what kind of fiber this is, but they've survived. They don't seem to be brittle. 
they seem quite strong. So, yeah, you can use that to bundle things up. That way, you don't have to use your rope. You can just tie it on this. Plus, then afterwards, you've got this string if it survives. Yeah. And if, we, if we lose the string, oh well, if we got the string. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm not asking for sleight of hand checks on this because it's very unlikely that with enough knots that it's not going to hold in. This isn't holding an individual up, so that's the reason why I'm not asking is because it doesn't really matter knot-wise, if anyone was curious. Hmm. So, hmm. you've got those things. Anything else you all would like to do? Anyone else? <laughs> Um, All good. So what do you want to do? Person curious what that sound was that now that we know there's nothing in this location. Oh yeah, actually yeah, the, the only real way to go now would be the uh Porcellus, yeah. yeah. Or that... back up the rope where uh Mercedes and Furia came in from. But... Yeah, where the rest of you came in from actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah we all came in from. One was on fire and the other one was falling. <laughs> Both was a real shit show. <laughs> Both were not graceful entrances. Um, yeah, do we want to try and check out the uh, portcullis? Yeah, let, let's see the port portcullis. Don't really want to leave about that. Okay. And there is the possibility of roping down to the giant like waterfall area too. Mm -hmm. Later on. Arms oh, yeah, full. Anyway. <laughs> arms full of ancient weaponry you head out from here past the hallway that leads to the pit trap going into the room that has a uh, previously melted now somewhat freezing a little bit but still slightly melted and charred and cracked a pull within it towards a barricaded door that has been somewhat mechanically locked by the use of a gigantic fireplace poker. So, who's going to open the door? Uh, Bozmik has his uh, hands free, yes? Yes, he does. He can uh, pull the pokey thing off, but uh, he still needs somebody to, you know, scamper up. We should, yeah, we'll get the uh, poker out of the way first now. I'll open the door. Alright, poker is out of the way. Tossed okay. aside, clanging on the ground. Because Vosmik oh. does not give a shit. So much for subtle, Vosmik. So much for subtle. Like, we've been down here too long. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, yeah, I'll, I'll climb up, uh, try and unlatch the door again. Putting down the swords? Uh, yeah, yeah. Alright, putting down the swords, you climb up, try the lock again. It grates a little bit. You can tell that it's, uh, it's starting to probably frost up again, but it hasn't fully done so yet, and it's still relatively loose, and you're able to, with a little bit more effort than normal, get it to open. And now it's a pull door. So, would you like to just have Vosmic yank you again? <laughs> yeah. Pull Vinny. Okay. Uh, he will back up, <laughs> just uncomfortably so, pulling you, <laughs> and you're able to hang Wee! on and pull the door open, and you're quickly, of course, all of you are uh, hit with the frigid cold air of this open chamber that once again is open with a terrible stink following behind it. And uh, the door is open towards the Porticullis room. Oh, cool. now I'll hop down, um, grab the swords, and keep going, I guess. Okay. So where's the ultimate goal? Portocollis, in which case uh, you're here, or towards the rope, in which case keep on walking. I'd say Portocollis. So we'd check out this first, see at least what, you know, what it's about. Okay. What would you like to do? It's there. Uh, Oh, you mentioned earlier, like a while back, there was no like obvious levers or anything on the outer side of it. Correct. It seems to be a plain doorway. Um, 
large mm -hmm. arch where before on some of these other doors that it's sort of a rectangular door built into an arch that's covered in the stone here the arch is open but clearly there's a mechanism working behind it and it's mm -hmm. this large portocollis this uh, this um, sort of a dense iron banding welded and riveted uh, the same sort of iron that's on the giant poker and <clears throat> you imagine that uh, this would be quite difficult to get through except you finny are small enough that these large creatures to their proportions did not seem to account for one of your size you are pretty certain that you could squeeze between the bars and get to the other side of this protocol. Or right, lube um... you up. <laughs> oh um, mm -hmm. Can I get um, someone to cast light on my cane before I go over? Yeah, sure, sure. Alright, cool. Yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, if I can get light on that, I'll, uh, I'll attempt to crawl through, I suppose. Without the swords, obviously. Leave them okay. on everyone else's side. Do you want a rope? Uh, Do you have a rope? Yeah, I've, I've got Three a rope. 30. You know, because you never know. But, okay. We'll crawling, see. We'll see. <laughs> crawling through on the other side, using your cane as a bit of a light. It's not too difficult. You're able to just kind of squeeze through. You kind of have to go diagonally through the square <laughs> opening. Mm. But you're able to uh, kind of weasel your way to the other side and you find yourself in a wide tunnel uh, somewhere in the neighborhood close to 10 meters wide and half as much tall about as tall as the other hallways were but uh, this is much wider and it's like a big arch and it continues deeper and deeper into the mountain going down and sloping down and in and for the light on your cane as far as it goes you do not see its end hmm. would you like to continue on this side is there any mechanism or anything there's nothing apparent you can search a little further hmm. if you like search more but looking at it at a glance, there's nothing obvious. Hmm. I wonder where the uh, yes, mechanism for this is. <laughs> uh, anyone else object? Or... It's now Finney's adventure. I've <laughs> <laughs> uh, really got no. Um, I mean, if anything goes wrong, do a shout, and I'm sure we'll find some way of getting through. Yep. Sure. Yeah, sure. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I guess I'll progress on forward cautiously because I've got no idea what's down here. Okay. <laughs> do you want to be looking for traps? Do you want to go slow? Do you want to be quiet, or do you just yeah, want to just? Oh, I'll, I'll definitely go stealthily down. Okay, make a stealth check, please. That is a 16. Alright. Slow and steady. You make your way further. Holding the very bright light cane above your head. Illuminating the tunnel before you. Descending deeper and deeper. You hear the occasional getter. Maybe a small insect. Or a small animal somewhere in the tunnel retreating from your light and you can hear the uh, crack of loose debris under your shoes a little more than dust and a minuscule pebbles being ground into the understone because everything else is silent and you all at the portocollis uh, can see that he virtually disappears after not too much time Although he does have the light above him, it becomes a little more than a pinpoint within a few moments. Uh, not moments, but, you know, time. He walks, and he walks, and you walk, and you walk as you go deeper and deeper. 
the tunnel continues to be roughly the same size and it is becoming more and more cold it went from four where you could see your breath if you were really looking for it in most of this terrible place and within the one open room it was also tremendously cold such that you can almost kind of feel it freezing a little bit on your skin but as you go further and further down this tunnel it's starting to hurt your throat you can feel the, the moisture in the back of your throat almost crystallizing around it it hurts to breathe this cold you can feel it in your bones and you're bundling up as much as you can with what little warmth uh, and what little blankets and clothing and you've been given by this kind town this town that desperately wants you to end the winter. Mm. How is everyone having fun, having now that uh, Fenny seems to have gone mostly out of sight? What are you guys doing up there at the Port of Collis? Uh, I'm waiting for Fenny. Well, I mean, yeah, we still have no idea what was causing that massive clanging noise, so maybe we could try to barricade some of the doors, I guess? rather not find out what that uh, noise was. And How would you like to barricade the doors? It's not a good idea, I think. <laughs> well, and Ray of Frost could do it. Yeah, I mean, all of the doors are pushed open, so if we technically close it, and... I mean, with Ray of Frost, does it technically fr uh, freeze its shut, or does it just make it really cold? It can potentially make things really cold, but it's already quite cold. So potentially, if you put water on the mechanisms or parts or something, if you no. were to uh, do we'll that, on them. and you ray of frost <laughs> it, and the cold room, yeah, Fee could do it, maybe. Well, not really, it's still warm plus the salt. Well, anyway, but if you put primarily water, probably the, the, the best one, you could essentially freeze the doors in place. It would be more difficult for whomever might be trying to come in, for sure. You could also, while this wouldn't work as well, you could also, again, just kind of smear some Yeti feces in there. I don't know what that would do, but it's an option. You don't have a lot here that you could utilize. There is a tremendous amount of debris that had fallen down from either from this kind of collapsing in or whatnot, because there's a big hole in the ceiling here. Uh, you could try to utilize that, but as you said... <laughs> these doors are push open from here so you can't really block them the door will still open and yeah there'll be a pile of debris on the other side it won't keep the door from opening do we need to lock them shut them uh, I don't think we need to lock them I mean if we pull them shut and then I mean if, if they make a the ETs make a lot of noise the ET is coming in I think quickly right across the door lock anyway that's a quick, if, that's my cantus spell, so. If, you know, if. And that's assuming yeah, the ray of frost will lock the door without having a material. You could also use a rope lock system. Uh, so you could, you've got two doors that are opposite each other. You could run a rope through them, tie a really tight knot, so that way one can't open, because it'll be pulling on the other, and then use that center rope to tie the third south one, or you could use the portacollis involved. But essentially, you could lock them with rope as well. Uh, hmm. What do you reckon? Uh, theory? Was that his? Which one do you reckon? Ray of Frost, what are um, the doors? Or uh, I'm use a ton of rope to keep it shut? Well, the water on the Ray of Frost is probably better. That way we can always unfreeze it. Because if you stick a bunch of rope there, it might get stuck from it. It, it, but it would mean that one door could easily be open if we do like tie the east and the west door. They could probably just pull it open. What do you think, Olicraft? Uh, uh, who wants to pee on the lock? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was not expecting that. Uh, well. If you volunteer. Already, let's uh, uh, I was playing a female. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It'd have to be, it'd have to be random. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so you hop up on random shoulders. Oh, 
Oh no. Mm. <laughs> Perfect plan. You know, what could uh, go wrong? Yikes. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could tend to go grab some of the fertilizer and wedge the door with it and then possibly freeze it? Is that really? Well, I mean, if we use water, that's how. That's what we need. Yeah, you're you're getting to the point where, in terms of sources of water, you're kind of running short. Like another day down here, and you're gonna start to face some dehydration problems. Did um, we get water from the pedal with the uh, camp thing? Uh, you want to trust that? Do you want to trust that water? That's probably uh, old yes. frostalized stuff. Ah uh, yes, ancient old tomb water. Lovely. Mm. Yeah. Pro preserved. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, like glacier water, right? Yeah, Let's drink sure. and find that's, it. That's very nice water. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> mm, go wrong. Crisp water. Crisp tomb water. Because I don't think I don't think bacteria they can live in ice. Ice water can it? Uh, Some very rare. specific types ice. can. Yeah. Well, they've, found living, they've found living viruses inside of a lake underneath the Antarctic ice between layers of ice in Antarctica. Yeah, but that's actual water though, isn't it? That's actual water, yeah. yeah but water. water. <laughs> so, what do y'all want to do? What are you doing? Are you going to try and freeze the doors shut or tie them shut or do nothing or just kind of pile stuff in front of it or what? I mean, we could... Like, if we do grab some of the fertilizer and just push it under the door, we could pray across it. On the fertilizer. Mm hmm. Hmm. I don't know about the fertilizer, because if you're gonna try to melt it again, that might blow up. <laughs> hmm. Actually, uh, you. I don't you're think been... that's a good. I'm. Um, <laughs> I'm not here. I'm not here. I can't talk about it. So. Yeah, let's not stick any fertilizer up in here. Any lock or anything. There's only two doors we have to worry about. Yeah, I think the door on the east side is pretty much safe. Yeah. Better idea. Yeah. Piero takes a massive shit in front of the door. Actually, this <laughs> the sovereign door is kind of safe too because there's a collapsed. Part, right, and then there's the trap. There's only two things, okay. so it's then only really one door. The west. Yeah, so pee on it and then frost it. Oh. Okay, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm so <laughs> lost. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Get on <laughs> this uh, oh, boss. The, the face palm is real. The face palm is real. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> carry, right, on. Cool. carry on. Carry so on. Who's doing the ping? And who's doing the, the freezing? Mercedes presumably will be yeah. using the, the freezing. Right, but, bro. Uh, yes. Um, uh, basically, yes, the mock shoulders. Yeah, Kara well, can pee on his shoulder from his shoulders, not on his shoulders. <laughs> so, Piero, you're gonna get on Bob's shoulders and kind of like carefully pee on the door. In from what universe is this a good idea? On the lock, <laughs> on the the sort of mechanism. Yeah. While ray of frost is being cast upon it. <laughs> oh, for the love of everything, don't aim towards it towards yeah. me. I do not need that. Question. Them. Question. Should Vosmik roll a wisdom or intelligence check to think if this is a good idea or something he wants to do? Uh, Vosmik thinks that this is a terrible idea, and he does not want to be involved. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, there we go, then. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I wasn't thinking this was going to go very far with Vosmik just being... Oh, sorry. Yeah, Vosmik just being like, yep, yeah, sure, hop on up. Okay, well, this I wasn't I mean, expecting that. I mean, uh, if we use the water from our water skin, that can leave us to dehydration. I mean, yeah. We but can try to go on my shoulders. I know you weigh more, but still. Okay, there is ice around. There 
there is snow around. Yeah, why don't I just do a little kick? Oh, wait, actually, yeah, oh, oh my god. god. But there is a pool right behind. Wait a second, there's a pool right behind. I'm in our next room. Yeah, sit on this. Just get on my shoulders. <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean, Think of could, we, could we use a shield as a like a uh, pot or like just get some water and just splash it at the door? Oh, I thought you were talking about holding it above your head as the pee comes down. <laughs> That's what I was picturing. <laughs> Absolutely utilize the pool behind you. Take some chunks oh, that oh you God. break off. Then no. use Play the bonfire <laughs> underneath the bonfire <laughs> to be able to light it up and heat this ice to melt it, and then pour it over the door, and then <laughs> use the ray of frost to freeze it in place. Yes, I think that is a better idea. <laughs> I disagree with okay. I had completely the wrong image in mind. <laughs> okay. Oh, so is that, is that good with Piero and Mercedes? Uh, I can't breathe. Yeah, I can in the corner. <laughs> right. I'm sorry, I'll be back in a minute. So I cast the bonfire, we'll melt the ice, Perry will put the water on the lock, and I'll cast Ray of Frost. Yeah. All right. Cool. Easy. It, it, does, it goes... Um, well, actually, if we could, please, Mercedes, if you could roll a... Uh, just roll, like, a, a Ray of Frost kind of attack. Let's just see how effective it is. What dice do I use for that? A D20. A D20. All right. Yeah. Do I add any modifiers on it? You do. So, Ray of Frost is a... Magical like... attack. <laughs> oh, God. And so you make a ranged spell attack, which in your class adds your intelligence modifier plus your proficiency bonus. Let's see, where's proficiency? So I got intelligence. Proficiency, where's that located? Your proficiency at this level is plus two. Oh, oh I see, plus two, so it's five in total, yeah. So I get yeah. a 24. <laughs> That's pretty darn good. Yeah, this sucker is solid. Nobody's getting through here without a lot of effort. Good. <laughs> I think I broke Pierre. I think I broke him. So, we've gotten to uh, the three hour mark. Do you guys want to keep going? Or do you want to stop here? I'm, I'm good to keep going if everyone else is. Kinda of want to stop. Well, I'm just a bit tired. It could go a little bit longer, I guess. I mean, I understand <laughs> oh, time, but just it's... try not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can stop now. It's a good stopping point. You got the door locked, and Finny is gone, probably never to return. And <laughs> it's a nice place to stop. I mean, I'll die happy not knowing what nearly happened in the other room. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there are some That's things great. a man should never see, and that is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Some like you don't like going to shower. Uh, yeah. Out of curiosity, <laughs> while we're going down this corridor, did I see anything, or is this corridor just constantly going down? Uh, you haven't seen anything yet. Hmm. So, that's sort of the question is do you want to keep going or do you want to stop? But if we can stop, it's a good stopping point. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, we've very nearly invoked the Bear Grylls ghoul of home defense <laughs> and that Fair the idea. only way Bear Grylls' locks are all sealed with urine um, but they're, they're not frozen it's mostly just a urine that's just kind of his thing but anyway so we can stop now or we can keep going but this is a good stopping point no shame in stopping here I mean, I'm good to keep going I'm fine with people I had off as well so up to everyone else I mind. Uh, very sorry about that. I had to go quickly every day. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> literally talking about that, and I had to. Get, get to <laughs> I'm sorry. The gift I found was just too fucking perfect for it. Uh, hey, it all goes together well. Oh, oh man. 
<laughs> Originally, I was looking for rain, like, coming down on, like, a tin roof or something like that. And I saw that, and I'm like, yep, that's perfect. That works better. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah. yeah. Um, do I keep going, or call it a... Yeah, yeah I'm, 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 good. I'm good to keep going. Okay. Going bit by bit. We'll yeah. keep going for a little bit longer. So... Uh, uh, as long as Mercedes is fine with that, I understand. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, just <laughs> a little bit longer. <laughs> just a little bit longer. Just a few more minutes. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Finny, mm -hmm. continuing further down with this tremendous blistering cold that you're entering into, with this tunnel going for, oh man, you don't even know how far. If you look back, you can't really even see anything like that. You, can, you think you can just faintly make out a light that is in the room at the Porticullus, but essentially you're just in total darkness. No matter which way you look, you either see an endless tunnel or a tunnel that you know must certainly have an end, uh, but you cannot see it from where you had come. But you're very quiet in moving. Are you confident to move forward? Do you want to make any accommodation, any change, or are you just going to keep on going? Um, how far roughly would I have traveled by this point? You've probably gone somewhere in the neighborhood of. In terms of meters, let me translate it again because I'm not. My brain is. I mean, fate works fine. Pay works fine as well. Okay, so you've probably gone somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe, um, well, call it like a hundred meters, hundred to hundred fifty, maybe two hundred. It's kind of tough to tell because that you have no point of reference. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in front of you, and as you turn around, you can't see anything behind you either. Mm -hmm. You just have the yeah. walls around. I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, I have a feeling like if there is any, like, you know, mechanism to this portcullis at all, it wouldn't be this far down, surely. So I'm thinking either we missed something, or it's like, you know, even if I do find something down here, like, if there's no way to get that portcullis open, there's no real way I can. I don't, I don't know what I'm going for here. Um, I will there's, add, there's no way anyone else could get in here, is what I mean. I will add, you do feel a breeze. Oh, I'll change the things. There's a current of air that's coming from in front of you. I mean, I could head back, see where everyone's thoughts are, you know, report on the... I guess, how far it goes, or how far I think going, um and the current of air as well. I don't know, because I feel like, like, even if there is something down there, if we can't get this poor callus open, it's not much of a point, maybe. I don't know, I'll, I'll head back and see what everyone else's thoughts are on the matter. Probably right. too far down. You come back up, you're delighted to find that after a bit of walking, you can soon see the light of the freight, or the light you know, shining through the grate of the portocollis once again. And soon enough, you are again through the portocollis. The rest of you guys, do you just lock that one door and leave the others, and then just resume waiting, or are there other shenanigans you would like to engage in? I don't know if there's literally anything we can do in this room. We can look around, that's about it. That's See so if there's anything hidden. That's about you it. get to the top and you find the group up, and you can hear voices as you approach closer. And as you get closer and closer further in towards the portocollis, uh, you hear some sort of an odd discussion as one of them is insistent that, look, we could easily pee on the southern door just to be safe. <laughs> Like, just to be safe, that's fair. Like, I don't... 
uh, but there seems to be some disagreement as to whether or not being on the door is worth it, uh, much less on the southern door. But anyway, you have arrived back at the quarter. Mm -hmm. I'll try and get everyone's attention then. Everyone, <laughs> Lou, <laughs> you, you done oh, bickering yeah. for a moment? Yeah, Come on, so far. We're still talking about what the business is. <laughs> I'm telling you, it it's gonna work. <laughs> no, I can't even say that seriously. <laughs> you Thanks. can pay, uh, pee, pee, pee it up, right? I'm, I'm just a bit confused of like, the fuck did I miss while I was gone? Gone showers, <laughs> almost. Oh no. <laughs> Yikes. Um, you walked into a parallel universe and emerged <laughs> a little Oh dear. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll report on my, um, say it's like, corridor goes down for like, a long, long way, it seems. There is a breeze coming from down there though, so there might be an exit, but... You know, if we can't find a way to open this portcullis, is there much of a reason to go down? I mean, kind of curious, if you heat up, uh, like, the portcullis, it's kind of made out of just a normal metal, or like, is it anything, any type of metal we can recognize? It what? appears to be some kind of an iron. Well, uh, I mean... The blue it, type, or it, just iron? It's more it, of an it, idea... It, um, like a wrought iron style, black iron, uh, clearly oxidized thrust, perhaps by temperature, but it is seemingly some kind of an iron. Could we technically heat up the metal enough to possibly break it? I have a feeling something like that can heat to a very hot temperature before it yeah. starts breaking. I don't think a bonfire is going to do it. If that is where you're not going. going to do that, that's for sure. No. I don't think a bonfire is going fire. to do it. If that's the path Extreme you were going down. Extreme heat and cold. <laughs> Maybe two bonfires, but... Not even two. <laughs> Three and a half. Bonfire, get... No, they won't get it at all. <laughs> yeah, no, it won't. It wouldn't. And then three of frost. Not a bad idea, but like we don't really have anything to hit it up and such. Actually, why do we have no dragonborn uh, here? <laughs> Gosh darn it! And yeah. how thick is the metal or the iron itself? Quite thick, um, yeah. more than a, a thumb's width. Well, it depends on the thumb, I guess. But <laughs> I was about to say that the thumb's width. That's a. Uh, hmm. I mean, it's yeah. just an idea. Like if it's been oxidized for goodness who knows how long, can. If it could possibly be in a bad state, could we? It does not appear to be in a bad state. Yeah. Can we break the brick around it? <laughs> Probably not. Potentially, there's several feet of it, but potentially. Hmm. Uh, I just, uh, it's either we even try to break down the girdle, or we try to break down the stone around it. Can, um, can he just make a, uh, I don't know if it's going to help at all, just in case, a procession or whatever, bot, investigation, I don't care, um, on your side, and we did one on ours, just in case we missed something? Yeah, Kai, Kai looks, um, more so around, like, the top of the portcullis, see if there's, like, any chains where it goes up further, or sure. see if I can follow any chains or anything. Yeah, sure, go ahead and make a perception check. I just want to make a perception check too on our side. Seven. I can make one. I'll make one too. Seventeen on my side. Okay. Eighteen Are you on mine. For anything in particular, Furia and Mercedes? Yeah. Any mechanisms? Any hidden, uh, like concealed contraptions and around the top and the sides of the uh, protocols? Okay. And Mercedes. 15 plus, uh, 19. Okay, but what are you looking for? Any I mean, discrepancies, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, anything out of the ordinary. Every board color must have a way of lifting it up, um, right? So it could possibly be maybe a chain or. There has to be something. Yeah. Just it might not it. be an hour side. 
And through Finney's observation, he's able to plainly state that, yes, indeed, it seems that through the gap of the portercullis that is coming, where it's coming through in this archway, uh, he can, with the light of his cane and quick observation, and a little bit of climbing up just to get a closer look, you can see chains on the other side of the gap that like Larry used to hoist the gate up. And on the other side, Furia and Mercedes, you are not able to see anything out of the ordinary. It seems like relatively clean, the normal walls of cut stone, nothing unusual, no control mechanisms, nothing. These these chains, do they like go up into the stone somewhere and then disappear, or can I see where they lead? You... Mm, let's see. With the roll that you had and with the light that you can uh, muster, you can see the chains go up and then they just stop going up. They likely bend around these drums, you know, these large, mm. like, pulleys, essentially. Yeah. And you don't know where the, the chains go from there. Hmm. Uh, right. There is something then, but like, who has a god to pray to? <laughs> pray to them now. Yeah, it's All level right. two divine intervention. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if we're technically inside the um, the book or inside the castle itself on our side, there has to be some like lifting mechanism that we just. Maybe didn't see or yeah why is the stuff on the other side i mean it technically would make sense that if the entrance was on finney's side then our mechanism would be on our side but the real question is of which room then would they possibly be hiding in could possibly be the levers that we found in the room of the staircase. Although those Except didn't that really... Budge. Yeah, they wouldn't do anything, so that's... If it yeah. is those levers, then that's no and good. And why would it be so far away that's, like, the complete opposite side? I would thought it would be close to the portcullis, but, like, we've not encountered anything, like, at all. Wait, so. actually, the room we're in, is there... I mean, the previous levers, they were about above us, right? Like, they were sticking out like little thumbs. The, the in the other places, yes. When you found the levers in the stairwell, they were very obvious. When you found them where the crucible was, they were very obvious. So I got one question about the map here. What's the, like, ladder down? Oh, uh, that's where the stairwell is. Yeah, that's where the levers were. Um, we can... That's what leave us away where we couldn't budge them. Uh, were... the were down. It was covered in ice, I believe it was. Yeah, it was covered in really thick ice. Um, that could those be related? <laughs> like, I mean, even even if those. Melt? Even if those levers... Oh, it was a lot of ice down at Stairway first off. Did we break them? <laughs> uh, oh, pretty when, sure two nat 20s oh, were rolled on it and they didn't yeah. budge, so... And we bent one. Yeah. We bent but one. that was about trying to break the ropes, ropes right? Hmm? Well, no, we tried so hard the ropes broke, actually. The ropes oh. broke? Yeah, we, we tied ropes around the levers and then pulled the ropes, because the levers were really, really tall. Um, and yeah. And the ropes any broke before they moved. So. You don't have any idea what those levers were for? No. Nope. Hmm. You think it has something to do with water. But since oh. it's frozen, mm -hmm. then. Okay. Uh. I oh. mean, the room that we found the, well, druids, I wouldn't technically call them remains. Uh, did we ever check that room to see if there was any type of lever or pulley? You did not see one obvious, but you, while you did look through it and kind of looted a bit, you could 
see anything like that, no. If only you had someone that could use Comprehend Languages, <laughs> which is a ritual that says, for the duration, you understand the literal meaning of any spoken language that you hear. You also understand any written language that you see, but you must be touching the surface on which the words are written. Wasn't there words on the police uh, near the stairs covered in ice? Yeah, yeah, they had words. Yep, there were there was writing there. Unfortunately, I don't think any of us have that kind of particular spell. That level one wizard spell. Yeah, don't know where you would find somebody that knows that. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, rather you suspect those pulleys have something to do with water. You don't know much more than that. You found the levers in the crucible. They, in the crucible room, they likely had something to do with moving the crucible. Obviously, that did not go very well. <laughs> nope. I disagree. And, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much all that you have found. I mean, you don't... You can, Finny, on your side, as you're looking up into the mechanism of the mm. thing, you can see the chains going up. And as everyone else is searching on the other side for a, a control to be able to open it, they don't see any sort of control to be able to open it. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, it really sounds like we might actually have to find the rope. That might be the, the only way out now. I mean, there is um, a possibility as well to sign down in a giant square, like, pit as well. Maybe there's a tunnel that just leads back up to where the spot callus eventually goes to. And we've not been down there either, we could... Um, true, but getting, getting down there is going to be a little tricky. True. Well, getting down where? The waterfall? Yeah, the waterfall area. Oh, uh, we got a rope. We just attach it to something. Yeah, it could climb down easy enough from there, I think, but... could even use the door the on the soap door, because it uh, has a handle, right? That could quite that. easily come off. Um, I think these doors have proven otherwise. <laughs> I mean, we've we've pulled the doors pretty hard, but we haven't put someone's entire body weight on them yet, so... I doubt you pulled the handles off, though. Not yet, but... Just saying, you know? Just saying. Yeah, if you want to do that, feel free to oh, go I... first. <laughs> sure. After we get killed from whatever thing was making <laughs> flying sounds. So what are you, do you, what are you guys doing? What's he doing? So, I heard the group say they want me to go outside and make more clanking sounds and determine where the thing was. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, no, let's, okay. let's pass on that. Well, I... we live in fear until we dealt with it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we never, did, uh, go, we never did go down the portcullis. We always kind of stayed up, because once we made that trip come down, go, go getting down. back up, we're, well... <sighs> You talking about the trip I just did? Or... I Wait, think you mean the waterfall area. Yeah, the waterfall area. Oh, right, yeah. sorry, my bad, my bad. But do we really want to go down without making a clanking sound and find out what was the other clanking uh, sound? See? We'd rather mm -hmm. not disturb it for now. Or I'd rather for kill now. creature, then go down, then go down and find out there's a creature down there. To be fair, it could have been just ball and debris. Just hit something metallic. I think we're just leaving um, it alone too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying we should leave it alone, but no one but me should go down the waterfall. So well, if we can attach the rope somewhere a bit light. more secure than a freaking door handle, then yes, we'll all go down. See, it's we saw it's a whole loop, right? You tie a good enough knot, it's not going to come undone. Yeah, but if somebody, well. Yeah, oh, alright, 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 alright. How about this? Jump up, grab onto the door handle because it is above the ground of where you could reach, and then if you can hang off of it without it snapping off, then we're all good. So Piero should do that 
in his armor. Oh yeah, who's the heaviest one then? Someone I'm jump up, grab the door handle, order. and see if it can take your entire Bosnick. body weight, which I highly doubt yeah. it will. That would either Let's be Bosnick or, uh, well, me. Yeah, yeah so whenever you do it, wearing your full suit of armor, so it doesn't break, which, then we know it's secure. Which handle would you like to do The Sovereign uh, door what? on the outside. Yeah, I'd say Sovereign door. Okay, so the one you're you grab the Southern door and then try to jump up and grab onto this thing and hang on it. Just say yes. <laughs> Yes, I will give it a go. <laughs> okay. Make an athletics check to basically do like a short running jump, leap, grab on, and hang on kind of action. Well, uh, 12. Okay. You succeed in doing a quick run up, and you do a leap, and you grab on, and you do hold successfully, and on the way down, you hear a clunk, and the handle soon follows with it. There we go. Glad nice we figured three. this out now, <laughs> and not halfway down the rope. <laughs> um, well, I could have probably made it fine, but yeah. If I may, isn't the port towers have a whole lot of pillars around? Um, oh wait, why don't we just yeah. attach a rope to <laughs> yeah. one of those? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. There's a whole bunch of openings and things that you could tie a rope onto the structure of the area. Yeah, that's not a problem. <laughs> Yeah, good we call. Just, good just call. Doing it on the door. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know why the door was the first thing of uh, choice there, but proximity. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Remember, yeah. In, instead of using water, we were thinking about using piss. So, yeah, proximity seems to be. Well, <laughs> water we drink. Wait, like, Piero, grab all the door <laughs> handles. Then nothing can open the doors. <laughs> 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 From solved. <laughs> From solved. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> doors. Doors are my enemies. <laughs> so, uh, so Finny's on the uh, northern side of the Portocollis, right? He can tie the knot because he's the best. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can tie sang, yeah. Uh, Shall I tie sang then? Yeah, yes, the I... question is does this rope go far enough? Far uh, enough. How big are the squares again? Ten feet. Ten feet. So yeah. No. no. <laughs> Is there anything okay. closer to the pit that we could tie something to? Well, yeah, you can tie it to the walls that are at it. It's got these windows, right? So mm. you could tie it. One, you could put the rope through the windows. As True. difficult as it seems, it's not implausible. It's, you know, but there's. Also, some debris you could tie it to people, you know. But otherwise, you basically it would be difficult. But you could potentially like add a weight and sling it through the window, or you could use. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that potentially you could use to be able to do it. There's I don't know if anyone has mage hand. Mage hand could help. I mean, there's yeah, a lot sure. of things that potentially are doable in terms of what you could. Uh, use for it. Uh, yeah, I could tie one into one of my daggers that I've got. And, and you're going by memory, of course. Oh, what's that? You're going by memory, of course, because you're not actually mm. there. Yeah, do we want to head down there and you know, see what <laughs> we can see? <laughs> yep. Yeah, let's head down and see. Uh, have a look at our um, options. <laughs> All right. How do you want to do that? Uh, we actually never did close this out on the southern door, did we? Uh, no. Well, no, they, they, no, they, they have been. We only messed with the uh, west door. <clears throat> I mean, we can't really close the southern door now. You just broke the handle off. But you can't open it. Well, yeah, what? that's. No, <laughs> we didn't. That's why we don't want to close it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is there any way we can... I mean, Vinny, is there any way to open this door without the door handle? Would the ripping off of the door handle have, you know, revealed any mechanism of the door or anything at all? Almost certainly. There's a hole in the door now. 
Could I hey, try and hop up with- we can with... tie a rope through it. So, <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> Fucking goddamn. Uh, um, yeah, that, that would work. Yeah. Could I, could I help yeah, up? Use um... the rope, have a metal pole or whatever, and um, use that. Can I hop on someone's shoulder to see if there's any way for me to use like thieves tools or something to uh, try and reopen the door? Then he sure. doesn't like my idea. You can get on Vop's <laughs> shoulders and go take a look up in there. If you would please make an investigation check. Mm -hmm. That is an eight. That's not that brilliant. Okay. You're pretty sure that, I mean, the thing rotates. So there's got to be something that moves in there. That'll do it. And you don't see much. You see like a pin kind of thing that's sticking kind of vertical. Maybe if you rotate that. Of course, it's in the middle of this door. Reaching mm. it is going to be tough. Uh, can I you can try and I will add, mm? you can uh, you can see the broken piece of the other side of the the door pull that is still within the door, so that can kind of help. It looks like this uh, door pull is it's a rod of metal that goes through that there appears to be this pin that's vertical went through this and it looks like it snapped at the weak point where the pin goes through this uh, larger sort of drum uh, maybe I'm not explaining it right so you've got a bar of metal that's horizontal mm -hmm. and it has a hole in the middle of it and there's a vertical pin that goes through that hole and then right, right. it has broken right at where that hole is and so you can see the other part of it on the other side, and then it's broken on this side. So that's all you can see. You're pretty sure that's got to move. Either it's got to be rotated or something. But that's pretty much all you can figure. Is there any way I'd be able to you know, play around with it a little bit, see what I can try and achieve? Or... Maybe. What have you got that can help you with it? This pen, it's a couple of inches into the door. And it's a really small hole. You could maybe use the door turn, the door pull, and just kind of shove it in there and hold it in there, and maybe that'll do it. But beyond that, what tools do you have that could be able to reach into this very small opening? An opening that you can't even fit three fingers in, uh, uh, side by side. It's, it's like it's a tight fit even for two of your smaller fingers. Uh, I've got I've got the faves tools, which I am presuming is like lockpicks and stuff like that, amongst other that? things. So, a... so is that there's also the tip of the rapier I've got as well, which is pretty thin. Yeah. So the thieves Maybe, tools, so. your kit. I'll read off what is in there. Mm -hmm. It includes a small file, a set of lockpicks, a small mirror mounted on a metal handle, a set of narrow bladed scissors. And a pair of pliers. Mm -hmm. What are they? Thin those pliers. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Not really. No. Scissors. Uh, would using the mirror give me a better understanding of what's inside there at all? Probably not, because oh. the mirror can't. Uh, the mirror probably. I'm imagining like a dental mirror. Right? Mm. Yeah. And it can barely fit in. But, I mean, maybe. You can try, but it's pretty dark. Uh, and you're still using your cane as light, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, maybe if you cast light on the mirror. Or on the, the handle. Because right now, basically, you've got a light on the outside. You would have to cast light on the mirror to cast light in the inside of the door, or to be able to get light, shine the light inside of the door, and then be able to see it through the mirror. And basically, that doesn't work too well in terms of the light. But mm -hmm. if you add something inside of it that's glowing, that would help. Or if you maybe put light on a ball bearing, and then put the ball bearing inside the door, you could light it up to be able to see it better. Yeah, or yeah, if that you could work. 
on the, the mounted, because the mirror is mounted on a handle. You could cast light on the handle. That might be able to do it, although the light might be overwhelming. But mm. uh, basically, you need something that puts light inside of the door to be able to see inside of it. Yeah, you could, you could try uh, a ball bearing. Definitely. Okay. So you're going to cast so light on the ball bearing. Boop. Some the Bosmic, Bosmic puts the light on the... Uh, or no, Mercedes, if you wouldn't mind. Since the light is on his uh, Finney's cane, he doesn't need it anymore. You could cast it on the ball bearing. So then his cane will go out, but Fierro's shield will still be on. Mm -hmm. If Mercedes is still with us, I would assume Mercedes would cast light on the ball bearing. So now you have... Yeah, I'll cast light, yeah. Yeah, you've got an arcanely glowing ball bearing now. Yeah, I'll try and put that into the door and see okay. if that you're, helps anyone. You're able to easily drop that into the door and you can hear it clink, clink, clink as it kind of settles in place. And you put in the tiny little mirror inside of it and you can see that there's something akin to a, a bar down there that's likely the bolt for this door. And there's also a gear mechanism that's being involved. Mm -hmm. And there's still this sort of rod. This rod's got to either be kind of moved or rotated. You're not quite sure which, but that is something that definitely needs to occur for it to be able to open. Uh, well, yeah, well, I guess... Also, you can see springs as well. I guess, um, try and move the, uh, what's it called, the vertical bar, I guess. Um, try and, so not vertical, a uh, horizontal bar. Sorry, the vertical bar. Is oh, it's a vertical one. Yeah, sorry, vertical. that one, yeah. There's, there's a horizontal kind of a, a bar that's like a bolt that goes into the wall, presumably, as a, that's actually keeping it closed. And then there's sort of a vertical pin that is uh, likely what yeah. is moving the whole thing in the bottom. Now, um, you're using lock picks or anything, try and, or even the pliers if I can get them in there, try and move that out of the way. There's, yeah, there's no way the lock pick will do it, but yeah. you can maybe get the pliers in there. It's kind of tight and it can barely reach. But, uh, and also, too, you wouldn't be able to open them really too much inside, it's just so deep in there. Mm. But yeah, you can kind of get a bit of a feel on it, a little bit. Basically, you got to put the pliers in, and then open the pliers while they're in, and then you can kind of get a hold on this thing. Mm -hmm. So you want to make this rotation? Yeah, yeah, I'll give it a go. Okay. Yeah, it. You try to turn it, and you can just feel the pliers kind of slipping or if they don't slip your grip opens up as you attempt to just keep trying to turn it's it just it's not turning mm. I don't know I have an idea really then I mean with the gears and all that I don't think I've got anything strong enough to be able to push on them move them really this door, the last time you kind of had uh, opened it up a bit, it was difficult with the mechanical advantage afforded by the ring. Mm. And no mechanical advantage and less of a hold. Uh, this might be very difficult to open, if not impossible, for you. With the tool mm. that you have. Well... I've got no other idea. So. Well, we could always try. If, I mean, we could always go with uh, Fieri that hero set the door on fire. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean, absolute worst comes to absolute worst. We just go through the west door and just go the long way around. And, like, well, actually, kind of curious. How does the door kind of hold in, like um, the pins, uh, like for the hinge? You can't see them. They're hidden. Ooh. Yep. Oh, darn. 
Uh, I'll I'll pack away my tools. Just um, you know, to just... down the waterfall. But we still need to get open the door to get to the. <laughs> Oh, I, su I suggest we go through the west door instead of this room we're in, and then just go down to the south part of uh, the waterfall area. We still well, have. I just recently at the mention of Finny saying, let's just go through the west door. Man, so. And what was that last part? Vosmik, uh, he whistles, and also, well, actually, Alucard will whistle innocently at the suggestion of going through the west door. Oh yeah, the west door, because it's uh, frozen shut at the moment. Oh, is that the one we froze? Actually, technically I wouldn't know that anyways. Correct. I wasn't there, so... Yeah, I'm not gonna say it. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, well, we, uh, we could try... You all have succeeded in sealing yourself in, with the exception of one door that... Yeah, no I warned against that. <laughs> I, I mean, but you, you want it sealed, so I sealed it. <laughs> so, the pen, so the pin itself, there's no way to um, it. Is there? Uh, this it's there's no way, but Finny with an eight and with the tool he has could not find a way. Mm. Could we? Uh, could the pin itself be brute strength to move? Potentially. Yeah, I mean, both... that doors are opened anyway. Well, Vosmik, get over here and let's give it a go. Uh, so Vosmik's on top, or? Uh, I'm on top. Okay. Vosmik will <clears throat> strain to lift you up. I mean, if He's I great. barely if I barely got a pair of plies in there, what do you expect to do? Yeah, what would you like to do to uh, use this, Piero? Well, I could try to. You've got a hole that is so small that you can you can't even fit two fingers into it, and you've got a pin in there that is you know about a quarter of an inch in diameter, and it's vertical, and you seemingly have to rotate that pin. I could try and use the end of my mace to possibly use it as a finger, or just as a finger trying to navigate it. The end of your mace. Which end? Oh, um, handle side. Okay. The handle on your mace is almost certainly too big to go into this hole. Ouch. Uh, yeah, like this thing is less than two fingers. You can't get two fingers into this hole. It's a small hole. It's about a, like an inch. <laughs> a little over, you know, 2.4 centimeters. Try one finger. <laughs> You just want to get a finger in there and try to move it? Uh, it's... You can try. I mean, that's the only thing you got. I mean, could we technically push out the other side or the other pin on the other um, side and try Absolutely. to deconstruct the door? <laughs> yeah, sure. You can do that. Alrighty, well, I'm... So do you want to use a small tool to try and push the handle out on the other side? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to I'll annoy Finny just to pass me something that could possibly be new. I can pass up a dagger if it will fit. Would a dagger uh, fit? If it's a thin dagger, then yeah, it could fit. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I'll pass up one of my daggers then. Okay. I don't even know where yeah. I come from, I've just got two random daggers, so. That's fine, passing up a thin dagger. Yeah, Piero, you can pass the dagger through and you can feel it touch on the other handle and pushing it uh, you hear a loud <laughs> as it falls and kind of bounces on the other side okay uh mm. <sighs> i mean it's like the metal itself would not exactly be easy to bend would it are you trying to bend it I mean, what are you trying to bend? So the both sides are now clear, so it's just now the middle that's keeping the door shut. Well, you've got this horizontal. vertical pin that is controlling a horizontal bar that presumably is going into the wall. And there's also some gear mechanisms in there and some springs. 
and a glowing ball bearing. Ooh. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not getting that back, Ava. It's probably falling into a spot I can't get. Hopefully, it's not jamming the mechanism. Let's mark one of them off. Back down to 994. I mean. Uh, it's, it's like I'm just coming up with an idea, possibly just to. I mean, if you bend the horizontal piece of metal, could you possibly slide it out? Like, is it technically in the realm of possibility? The, the horizontal bar that goes into the wall? Yes. Is it possible to pull it out? It's locked, it's locked in place by the vertical one, though, isn't it? Potentially, yeah. So you'd, the best way to get that out would be to break the door is to like cut through and break through the door and the get past the iron plate that kind of covers the, that area and uh, prying through that and then break through these timbers you could potentially get to this bar and then you could pull the board bar out that way in terms of bending the bar and pulling it out this bar is maybe like an inch to two inches thick of iron this thing could take tens of thousands of pounds of pressure and you're probably not going to be able to bend it and even if you could you wouldn't be able to get it out of this hole you your best chance of getting that out would be to destroy the mechanism of the door uh, <laughs> well i mean we could always go to the idea of setting the door on fire or just at least have a concentrated fire maybe around the metal burn it, burn it all <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I, I reckon I should step down and let's go with the Pyromaniacs. Bosmic sighs in relief. Alucard asks, why are we doing this again? <laughs> because of the portcullis. Because yeah, the, le um, the west side is frozen shut, the east side yeah. leads to a pitfall, and the south side is so close. <laughs> well, the so south close. doesn't go anywhere either. <laughs> well, uh, south side, uh, the south side opens up into the, the pit of the frozen waterfall, yes. But you could go east through the door, and then, yeah, you'd have to cross the pit trap. But what would be easier, to cross the pit trap or to spend Burn the door down. how long breaking down and burning down this door? Uh, fair enough. The second point. I guess we can try to defrost the west door. Well, that wasn't even his, his, his suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Oh, uh, this is fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah, it was going to happen. <laughs> but no, we wanted to sh see whether uh, we still shut. <laughs> I mean, what do you want to do? I give you guys like ten minutes to try and figure out. Although <laughs> you, you've been trying to, oh, you've essentially been trying to open this door for like an hour. I've been trying to unfuck the situation for close to an hour now. <laughs> All right, so uh... what are we doing? <laughs> What's the plan? What's the objective? Uh, I want to add. I, I, I don't wanted even to know anymore. I thought many of these going. Like, I wouldn't have inflicted this on anybody on stitch <laughs> but here we are so what are we doing oh uh, good i mean yeah with the pitfall trap yeah, it's gonna be something that's gonna be a right roll pain to get by but it might be the only option finny theory <laughs> anybody <laughs> uh uh pitfall you say Uh, I mean, uh, I guess, like, I mean, uh, unless we defrost the west door, like, yeah, there's no real other way. Uh, south door is beyond fucked at this point. 
<laughs> no, it's, that's never opening again. So. I'm kind of more impressed there, actually, then again. It would be easier to assemble the door if it was open. <laughs> I'm also surprised we still kind of locked the door while trying the theory of can we typically. <laughs> See, I thought either A, it was open already, or B, you were on the other side of it, not our side. <laughs> I thought we'd try it on the opposite uh, side, but... No, said no, you I... opened the door. Yeah, no, I... Nobody said it, I mean, I... Overlooked <laughs> that one, yep. <laughs> How was the door at the moment, or like, what is the position of the door? Because it actually dead again makes sense. If I'm having a running start, it's easier to have a running start when the door's closed. Yeah. I mean, it's... I, I don't... <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys make your own mistakes on this one. Right now. Yeah, <laughs> if you're not specific... I'm gonna go with whatever is the state of where things are currently. This is, that's what it was. The door was closed. Okay, you can break the handle off. There you go. It's broken off. And the door's closed. <laughs> I heard that it was off. <laughs> anyway, so what are you? What are we gonna do? What are you, gonna, what are you guys gonna do? Uh, let's go to the east side and try to make our way past the pit. Do we not want to just try and defrost the door? Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm in ideas <laughs> this one. I'm, I'm... Whatever you um, want at this point. Like... I personally would go with defrost before pit because failure means pain. A likely death. We only had one antidote and that is long gone. Oh yeah. Don't even know where he got an antidote, but we'll run with it. Yeah. All right. I vote for. Okay. Defrost. I vote for defrost. Could take longer, but you know, knowing your track record, Piero, with that pitfall trap. You know, that pitfall trap's out for two for two at this point. Piero, your vote. Uh, defrost, because yeah, I I thought maybe I might get by the pitfall this time, but. Are you uh, glad we didn't pee on the door? Give it. <laughs> All right. So, by what mechanism are you going to attempt to defrost? Torch uh, again, okay. maybe. Yeah, the I would assume fine. the complete same thing we did before: a new torch, rope. Um, yeah. where is the pinch thing? Whatever. Where did you leave it after smacking it into the ground a hundred times? I thought you barricaded. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 we barricaded the door. So it's on, it's on the. Yeah, cool. the same side. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, yeah, get that. Make the makeshift um, torch poker. Um, put it 15 minutes or whatever, same deal. Uh, then get on yeah. shoulders. You okay. can see after 15 minutes that it has not melted all of the ice. It'll wait longer. <laughs> All right. You continue to wait. You can see that there are certain areas, because there's a, a good amount of water. You guys put a lot of water on here and froze it really well. And it's pretty thoroughly closed um, in terms of melting things with the torch. Bringing the torch really close is enough to melt some of the water and it drips down and it freezes before it gets to the bottom of the door. Um, and you're able to move it along. But some areas, you're melting the water that's up on the top of the door, and it's working its way down the door, and it just continues to seal in the crack between the stone and the door. And so it's just moving the seal down slowly. Uh, but at the end of using the torch for an hour to try and defrost the mechanism, hoping that the inside is defrosted, but who knows, and loosening the water from the outside, uh, you end that eh, most of the ice is gone, and the torch is burned down. Can we count that as a short rest? <laughs> for everyone <laughs> else. <laughs> you can count it as a short rest for whomever was not controlling the torch. I was with the torch. So everyone else had a, a short rest if they so choose. Just clarifying, whose torch are we using? Or who, who got yours? 
<laughs> Who's rope? Also, <laughs> off the Pieras. Uh, yeah. Half short, another um, couple of feet of rope, although you could maybe recover it later, but it would be a separate piece of rope. Because hmm. I'm assuming you don't have the entire rope tied on this thing at once. <laughs> 47 feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I teach you to get off the smoke. <laughs> it's up to you guys. But. Well, the door you think is eh, mostly defrost, at least on the outside for sure. But you don't know how much got in. You know. Okay, I'll try it. <laughs> I'll get on okay. Frost Mick's shoulders and go for a ride. Okay. Sounds weird on purpose. Yeah, crap. Strength? Strength? Yep. 20? Strength. 20. 20. Not natural. Gotcha. It, it is enough that with a lot of effort you are able to clone this thing free uh, it takes a lot there's crunching and but you are able to get this ring to rotate to the point that you are pretty darn sure that it is now unlocked yeah. And this is a push door. Uh, so, Bosmic ah. push. Door no move. Would anyone else like to push? I can try and help a little. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying right. to. Go ahead and roll to push. The strength check. I guess I'll push two. There's a seven. Okay, a seven. Twelve. Twelve. Anyone else? I got a seven. Seven. Anyone else? Piero? Uh, this was to push the door open, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. We all suck. Oh, I got a five. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we, we yeah. literally suck forever. We're never leaving. <laughs> I'll throw in Alucard and the Invisible Servant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah the door no open oh my God. I'm deleting that gift pushing on still does not open <laughs> well that's it is <laughs> and soon after uh, the invisible servant you can feel it Mercedes is uh, it goes on its way, so you have to cast a ritual to bring it back in, but you are one torch short. Again, the door seems to be pretty darn stuck. The door to the south also seems to be somewhat broken and is slightly glowing on the inside. The door to the east <laughs> is wide open, and you can feel a breeze coming through the portacullis. A rhythmic breeze. And you can almost hear in the silence of the frustration a grumble. And we'll, okay, I'm really glad I didn't go down there, though. We'll pick that up next week. 